Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I am Scott and my partner in crime in all things cryptid <laughs> is Callum and he's sitting right opposite me. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing, mate? You yeah, right? I'm very well. Very well. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, doing good, mate. Doing good. good. Uh, how's your week been? <sighs> yeah, pretty, um, yeah, pretty standard week, to be honest. Yeah, yeah pretty, um, pretty typical been... Yeah, a bit of working from home and, and back up in the city again, um, which is still a ghost town, really, for the most part. Um, Always happy when that happens. So, well, yeah, it, 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 but it, it just feels weird when you're just used to it being chaotic and mm. everyone's in a mad rush and a panic. And then it was, you know, it's like a scene from, you know, The Walking Dead or 28 Days Later or something. It's At just last. It's just quiet, <laughs> desolate, and things are boarded up and shut. And yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it? It's weird. Yeah. But it's, uh, but no, it's uh, been good otherwise. What about yourself? I know you've had a bit of a oh, stinker, to put it politely. Yeah, I've had a bit of a challenging week, yeah. as uh, as some might say. Um, there are various different issues, uh, along with this one, in fact. Um, we you know we, we put out a little uh, notification um, or yesterday, which would have been the Saturday, which would have been when this episode should have dropped. Yes, that's right. We've uh, we've unfortunately we've had a, a well some technical difficulties. The technical yeah. being. Right here, the difficulties being, being us. us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be fair. Yeah, in the circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so we do yeah. very much apologise for that to all the yeah, ramblers out for there. The delay, but uh, yeah, well, it's still a uh, yeah, still a learning curve for us. This, Teasing issues. All of this uh, this experience with being in a you know actual proper studio using proper equipment and yeah. different software and everything else. So um, yeah, we hit a bit of a a blip sadly, but uh, yeah, touch wood that seems to have been. Uh, removed and now we're back to right. um sort of do it again which as as we discussed sort of off uh you know off the recording um was you know a bit of a blessing in disguise possibly yeah um as, you know so. aside from the uh the other difficulties so um yeah hopefully we we bring a better uh a better episode Let's hope <laughs> on so. many counts <laughs> <laughs> let's hope so <laughs> you can only hope yes <laughs> so um so before we do get started um just like to Remind our listeners about our Patreon. Absolutely. And uh, a, a big thank you as well to our Patreon, Justin. Yeah, absolutely. Very thank much you, appreciated, yeah. man. So Cheers. So you're a big thumbs up right there. <laughs> and Justin, <laughs> uh, the details of that, the, the pr Patreon can be found on all of our socials. We'll obviously yep. post the links um, where we yeah. drop the new episodes and other such uh, posts. Yeah, But absolutely. the other way you can also support us is with the merch store. And yes, as we yes. are always, always going to be modelling, modelling, yeah, <laughs> our latest merch. Absolutely. So, uh, Justin, yeah. you can see this. Yep, for your benefit. Yeah. We may even uh, put a little something out today that shows uh, us wearing the merch yes. as well. Um, yeah, might do a little something. Yeah. So, which you will have already seen. So yes, but yeah, absolutely. Um, also, we'd like to uh, thank our sponsors as we well. Would. Yes, mostly for putting up with us. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's just like Ben. I could, I could just see him. We didn't see it, but I could just see him head in hands. Like, what the fuck just happened? Well, he had more. Well, he had more hair the last time we were here, so I think he's. Uh, I think he's pulled most of it out. I, I think, think so. Uh, it may be regretting the, the deal. I, I, that we've I think made. so. Yeah. I hope he doesn't, but <laughs> yeah. I would be surprised. <laughs> so this podcast is recorded and sponsored by Hellfire Studio. Essex's first podcast, film and photography studio situated just 45 minutes from London. Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. Visit hellfirecreative.com for more information on that. Yeah. Um, but as a listener of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast, you can also take full advantage of a 20% off discount code for podcast, video and photography services yeah. at hellfirestudio.uk. That's right. So... All you've got to do is check which uh, service that is you like, head to checkout, and just before you you do check out, put a code encrypted. Yep. That's C R Y P T I D. Yep. In the uh in the little checkbox and that's you it. get your twenty percent off. There you guys. go, yeah, all good all good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Right, so let's get into it. Let's what is it, it we've been researching, Callum? So, uh, <laughs> so we've done this before. We have. So we have. But we have been um, researching <coughs> mermaids. That we have. Mm. Yeah. Um, for twice as long as uh, as usual. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> through to um, 
uh, yeah, us being the, the difficulty, as you uh, mm-hmm. so eloquently put earlier. Um, but yeah, we've um, yeah we've, we've sort of dove into that, and uh, yeah, like like always, try to get to the bottom of uh, yeah, whether it's just nothing more than a, a myth just and stories. a fairy tale, so just stories, you know, fishermen swapping stories mm-hmm. to pass the time, or whether there might actually be some. Uh, yeah, r- real world evidence, which Some, uh, a bit of credence to it. Yeah, absolutely. Which listeners will know we like to try and sort of bring to bring to the table, not just the fantastical and the no. mythical, but also uh, a little bit of real world as well. So hopefully we we do that today. Um, but just to um, just to start as as always, um, sort of back at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> back to the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So what is the, so? Uh, because you you research more so like historical sort of cases and the origins yeah. of like the mermaids, the legends of the mermaids. So yeah, what did you find out? So I guess just to start with what for some might be the obvious, um, but in folklore, um, mermaids are believed to be an aquatic creature. It has the head and upper body of a human female and the tail of a fish. Um, they prominently um, are in the cultures of uh, sort of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Um, they're usually linked to tragic events, which I can't say I was necessarily aware of. Mm. Uh, but it, it makes sense when you uh, when you read it. But um, it was events like floods, storms, uh, shipwrecks, and of course, as a as by you know by extension of that, drownings. Sadly, of course. Yep. Um, and uh, they're also no sort of from the more kind of romantical um, sort of side. There are sort of plenty of stories of them actually. Fall in love with humans. No, oh, um, like Disney, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is where the Disney <laughs> bit comes in. Yeah, which we'll uh, yeah we'll definitely cover a little bit more <laughs> later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and also um, not only that, but there's actually been reported stories of marriage as well. Marriage between mermaids and, and humans. So, uh, wow. Well, yeah, if you I don't want to know the mechanics of that relationship. No, no, that's no. That's, <laughs> it's before <laughs> the watershed. <laughs> <laughs> not safe for kids exactly yeah um now the word mermaid again for those that don't know comes from the old english language um and it's a combination of the word mer meaning sea and maid of course referring to a young girl or or woman a maiden um so uh, yeah so literally a sea woman (laughs) (laughs) which yeah it sounds obvious when you when you look into it (laughs) i know right (laughs) um now, of course, there is a, a lesser-known male version, um, simply known as a uh, merman. So I don't think the uh, the mm. discussion took too long to think of what to call. Uh, it's a bit derivative, them. isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little bit more. You know what it says on the tin. <laughs> um, there's no real sightings um, of mermen. Uh, it's just kind of assumed that they coexist. You know, with females. You know. God forbid, there's just a female of the species. You know, that, that just, there has to be a men, uh, a men, <laughs> a man being dragged behind it. You know, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of like lions, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. So, um, yeah, th- I couldn't really find much in terms of a, a you know a difference in origin or mm. or anything like that. Some specific kind of sightings do come up, which again we'll, we'll cover a little bit um, a little bit later. But yeah, nothing of really any note to be honest. But uh, okay. But yeah, there are supposedly such a thing as mermen um now collectively they are known as merfolk or mer people um just you know as we like to be all inclusive yeah absolutely so, uh, 21st century mer thems mer theys <laughs> all, all the like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's left out no one no one at all <laughs> fully inclusive yeah absolutely <laughs> um now depictions of entities with uh, the upper half of a fish and um, oh, sorry, the upper half of a woman and the lower half of a fish uh, have cropped up in artwork dating quite far back, actually, the, the Mesopotamia uh, period specifically um, mm. and around the old uh, sort of Babylonian era um, seems to be the sort of the earliest um, or one of the earliest yeah. at least that people have, uh, that people have found. The Mesopotamian um, one, if I remember rightly, should be Ishtar. She's often... Yes, that's meant. Yeah, that's that's mentioned. I think there's a few um, sort of carvings and stuff, and yeah, she, yeah. she's one of them. Yeah, because yeah. the the old Mesopotamian gods were often a, um, a a mixture of both beast and man. So that's like, right. they've got like the um, Enki and Enil, Enil, 
I think that's how I pronounce it. I don't think that's right, mm. but but they're basically they're like the winged bulls of Sumeria, and it's absolutely incredible. Like these statues are carved out of quartz. Yeah, which yeah. is like hasn't easy to work with. How anyway. the hell do you carve yeah. quartz? Yeah. You know, and they, they they were done like especially back then as well. Yeah, yeah. like six thousand years ago. Absolutely, at incredible. least now it might be machine done, but yeah, back then it literally would have would have been well, some. Well, I yeah, like Islamic State have made sure they destroyed them. Yeah, they, of course. They, yeah. they took Kangols yeah. to them. Yeah. So that will <laughs> yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that will certainly do it. But yeah, yeah, I find it really quite interesting that the old Mesopotamian gods yeah. have this um, this this mixture of like both human, uh, a human animal hybrid sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, so it's been around for, you know, sort of quite a while. So it kind of starts to, so even early on, you start to look at this and think, oh, actually, there might, you know, there, there might be more to it than just a, mm. a fairy tale. If it's going that far back, you know, then well, of course stories have been going for millions of years well, or the whatever. The Sumerian but... um, uh, origin story of us, the humans, is yeah. that we were created, we were genetically, and they, they, they basically the way they put it is yeah. we were genetically manipulated yeah. by the gods yeah. to be in this form. So they took like yeah. a like a, uh, a more archaic uh, primate mm. and they just did a little bit of gene splicing with their own genes. Yeah. And this this monkey, yeah, and created yeah. us basically, yeah, um, yeah, um, you know, as we've spoken against, um, you know, sort of separately, um, you know, a lot of these sort of gods and you know creatures would have, you know, come and visited people back then because they were, you know, probably smarter and more in tune with you know with with that kind of thing, yeah, so they were more more willing to uh, you know sort of present themselves. Yeah. So the fact that it's you know it's it's gone back that far is. Don't know. Was of a su- was of a surprise, but then you know, on the same, you know, the other side of the coin, it wasn't a surprise. It was it was one of those. It weird... made sense. It yeah. was a surprise that yeah. made sense. Then yeah, really, exactly. It? Yeah. Um, now the other interesting thing is that although it was that early back, some of the um, sort of earlier carvings and depictions um, were actually um, as mermen. So, although there isn't a specific kind of origin or mm. that many sightings, mermen was actually one of the first reported. Um, so we did, we did it first, ladies. So we did it first. Sorry, you can't have that one either. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be a reboot anyway, so it's not a problem. <laughs> You're gonna be a reboot, will be. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty soon. It, yeah. Mark our words. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, the, the occasional mermaid um, did appear, but I guess you know, with the you know, ma- you know, ma- male gods and and all this, and mm. uh, it being a lot more kind of male dominated even then um you know there was the odd mermaid that kind of slipped in yeah um now the mesopotamian name for mermaid was believed to be kaliti uh so kalitu um basically meaning fish woman so again. again a similar um kind of origin so you know whether we you know kind of either just come up with it ourselves with mermaid or whether we just sort of was able to translate that and think, oh, we'll just pick our own. Well, it's, it seems sort of like translation. Well, there is um there is a, a an interesting thing with regards to language and mm. uh, people that do study the linguistics and uh, I think it's called it they call it archaeo linguistics. Yeah. They've been able to trace the origins of our languages all right. the way back to like a Germanic origin and then yeah. back to Mesopotamia. So yeah, back, all the way back there, right? Yes, yeah, okay. so they call it so um, uh, Indo-European language. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's very, very yeah, likely. So it's that likely that we just it's just moved because progressed we, from that into well, all the way from the Indus Valley in India mm. up to Ireland. Mm. Um, there is there's uh, very, very strong connections with our languages. Although the, the the structure of the sentences might not be the same. Yeah. The words are incredibly similar as well. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that, yeah. And knowing that again makes perfect sense that there is such a, a yeah a similarity yeah um now we've with that being said the, the first known stories um of, of mermaids so we've got the first sort of depictions in carvings and and drawings and whatnot but the first known stories certainly that i could find um of mermaids um appeared in uh assyria um which is now of course known as just syria um mm. and other parts of the uh, the middle east um around a thousand bc Right. Um, <clears throat> now the the story is about a goddess um, Atagartus uh, who uh, apparently she loved a, a mortal man, uh, a shepherd, um, and she accidentally killed him. Um, oh. I, I dread to think how, <laughs> but, 
but being oh, a goddess, you can probably imagine. In the throes of passion. Yes. <laughs> she uh, because didn't she, know her own strength. Exactly right, yeah. Um, kind of remind, I don't know why, but the, uh, did you ever seen the film Goldeneye? That's exactly what I was just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> of Famke Jensen. That's it, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yeah. Yeah. I, like the, I like the bit with the, uh, the Soviet general. Uh, after she's just mowed down the entire room and she's like, she's loving it. Like, yeah, yeah. She is loving it. He just looks at her like, what the fuck? Uh-oh. Right, okay, <laughs> yeah. so we've got a wrong in here. Not so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So that, that, that was the, the imagery that instantly kind <laughs> yeah. of popped in there. Um, Great minds, mate. Great absolutely. Minds. Um, now, ashamed of, of doing this, um, she, she basically jumped into a lake um, to with the intention of taking her own life. Um, but actually took the form of a fish um, and the, uh, sorry, but the water um, couldn't hide her divine beauty, as it was put. Um, And so from that point, she just took the permanent form of a mermaid. And and then they they believe that's where it it kind of come from. Um, I, I don't know how long she was in there for to kind of take the form of a fish or whether that was just like an instant kind of, well, usually with these old stories, yeah. they, they it's just like before she's even hit the water, another god just goes smite, zap, yeah, yeah, yeah and it's sort of happened, yeah. So yeah, but the, yeah, so she took that form um, per, uh, permanently. Um, now, about five hundred years um, before that, a Greek uh, philosopher, um, Anaximander, I think that says, um, believed that we actually came from an aquatic animal species uh, specifically, oh. so a slightly different sort Ooh. of evolution which i know you've got a lot more on yeah <laughs> so okay, we'll, a little uh, bit more on yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll cover it's interesting um, that yeah so we'll oh, cover didn't realize that. That, it, that went back as far as that yeah 500 bc yeah yeah wow yeah so it would have been yeah back then that this yeah this philosopher um i didn't go into the kind of the whys and wherefores hmm. um in, you know in terms of sort of why he he believes that but um it, it jumped out specifically because i knew we'd had that kind of chat beforehand yeah. and you mentioned this whole uh, sort of evolutionary history and yeah I thought oh because funny enough I'd never heard of it until you mentioned it mm. and then when I was doing my research it then actually popped up as a potential it's quite real an, world connection it's, so it's I was quite like an oh, interesting wow. theory the old uh, yeah. aquatic ape theory is, is yeah, quite no, is. interesting oh yeah it really is yeah um, so yeah as I say we'll, you'll come on to that yeah. uh, you know a little bit uh, a little bit later um, now it's also believed um, that the mermaid uh, derived from uh, sirens, which again, until this research, I assumed were actually one of the same, mm. um, but maybe from a different region that they got ass- um, assigned a different name. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but uh, that's not actually the the case from, from certainly from what I found. Now, obviously, okay. sirens are of, of Greek mythology, uh, and they are depicted as being half woman and half bird. Um, which, if you've seen. If you've seen like statues or, or yeah. drawings, it, it is weird. It, it's, <laughs> it's as weird, weird as you'd imagine it to be. Yeah, it's not quite as um, you know romantic um, as the mermaid. Yeah. yeah, at least they, there can be some kind of beauty and elegance in in you so know, what, the idea of a mermaid. But... So what is it like then? Is it like a bird with the head of a woman? You can't, yeah, more or less. If you yeah, if if you imagine, it's kind of like it's set up like the the, the minotaur. So you've got the little yeah, little skinny bird legs, you know, sort of the the, the bulbous sort of lower body, yeah. the, the feathered tail, and then it sort of starts from the waist up of of, uh, of a woman, and it's, it's weird. Wow. You know, it's, yeah, it's not quite as um, you know. You know what comes to mind with that? Is, do you know? Um, do you know that YouTube channel Bad Lip Breeding? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did a song. Yeah. Um, it uh, is that the Star Wars. Right, and it was called. <laughs> this could could sound really weird. The song is called "Bushes of Love," and in the bush, <laughs> right. there's a uh, a creature that's got a chicken head with duck's feet and a woman's face too. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> that is the, weird. <laughs> I'll, I'll post that on the social yeah, we'll so you could ever listen to that because context. It's yeah, quite funny. Th- that but is, uh, yeah, but that is weird. But yeah, so there's no. I mean, I'm, it's it's one of those sort of bastardizations of 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 sort of a you know a mythology that you could probably appreciate because if they'd stuck with the siren mm. you probably it probably wouldn't have gone much further than that because there isn't really any kind of you know sort of romance or or anything like that no. it's, it's, it's quite an odd looking well, creature I again sp- we'll share some um pictures on the socials i suppose but... the modern day romance side of it all was, was really just it's come from disney again isn't it 
Yes, predominantly, yeah. I mean, actually, uh, it stemmed back again from uh, initially um, from, you know, good old Christianity, um, who at some point, you know, kind of come charging in and, and basically changed it. It was around the rise of the Roman Empire, so quite some time ago. But yeah, mm. it was, it's another thing where Christianity have said, no, no, we, we don't we don't like that. We're going to change this for, the, for oh, our agenda. Oh, Mrs. And Boucher. So, as, uh, yeah. Everything's a devil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mama, mama, mama said, mama said. Yeah. You know, I don't, want you, like I don't want you doing math. <laughs> math is a devil. <laughs> yeah, you <know>? basically. <laughs> That's pretty much what I imagine when we look into these things and you sort of. I read. don't want you telling stories. Telling stories is the devil. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Christianity thought everything was the devil and, and changed it to fit their agenda. So, yeah, making everything the devil yeah. for. They don't you want know, you playing that. Troll. They don't yeah. want you playing that foosball. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's kind of a yeah, that's that's kind of a, an initial um, sort of origin and I guess brief history um, in general mm. of of sort of mermaids. Um, I also found some kind of local uh, sort of stories and uh, encounters, um, which I thought I'd go for. I do then obviously branch out into um, sort of parts of uh, of Europe as well. Um, okay. I thought I'd start in, uh, in England, um, ah. kind of made sense. Um, and the earliest depiction of a mermaid that I could find um, is actually in, it's carved in stone, um, dates back to about 1078 and is uh, at uh, Durham Castle. Which, oh, yeah, well, we all know. We all know. That's where the Pink Panther lives. Absolutely. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Durham, 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 Durham. <laughs> Top notch comedy there, folks. Very uh, very sorry. You are welcome. We're, we're very sorry. <laughs> we won't do it again. Hashtag no, no we, promises. We, we probably will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. And in British British folklore, um, yep. the put my teeth in, uh, they are seen as uh, unlucky omens, which uh, we'll find is quite different between all the, the sort of the cultures. But yeah, we, we see them as, as quite unlucky. Gotcha. Um, where they'll either foretell of a disaster or they'll provoke it. Um, which, when I read that, I don't know about you, but that instantly reminded me of a banshee. Yeah, yeah. In terms of when you see those, either the tragedy has already happened or they're letting or you know that it's to about happen. to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the sea banshee, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah. Um, now, seeing a mermaid um, can apparently mean that. Uh, that, yeah, the bad weather is approaching, um, and she would doom ships uh, by either telling them that they would never see land again, um, or that they are close to the shore. Mm. Um, either way, you know, a, a wise sailor um, would know that they both mean the same thing, and that you know the mermaids. Ah, being, one's a lie. Yeah, so it's like. Yeah, she's being a bit sort of facetious, I guess. You know, so she's been like, "Oh yeah, no, you know, you'll never see land again," or you're, "Yeah, you're you're really close." What she's saying <laughs> is, "You're fucked, mate." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're you're knackered either way, son. Yeah. yeah, and she so it's just whether she either just is straight up with them and says, "Yeah, you're doomed," or she'll toy with them and give them which, sort of false hope, I guess. Which that is because um, we've been speaking about these, we've been looking at all these sort of things. That's very much something that you get from like low level entities. Where they're just yes. constantly tricking, they're constantly yeah. sort of badgering and yeah, sort of, yeah. That is just just be straight, yeah. You know, that which is apparently something that Tell low level entities is. can't do. That they no. just want to muck about and get, try and get as much misery as possible. Yeah, exactly. They've they've got a they've got an agenda, and you know, as long as they get to that, they're, they're you know, it's fine. But they want to sort of have a bit of a play or mm. sort of be sort of torturous, almost you know, in, in that respect, yeah, which. Uh, yeah, which I thought was um, was quite interesting, actually. Um, now, some sort of encounters, I guess. Um, in Scotland, uh, the, uh, the kiask, as it's uh, pronounced, but spelled C-E-A-S-G, which again, we found from the Banshee episode, that it doesn't, you don't say it how it's spelled. No. <laughs> it's not phonetic no. in that respect. Yeah, it's kind of an odd sort of word, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the kiosk um, was known to swim up rivers to freshwater lakes. Um, and uh, on one such occasion, um, 
a Laird of Launty, um, which is basically it's just the owner of a Scottish like, estate. I guess like an basically. earl or something like yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah bit, of a, bit of a dandy, bit of an earl, that sort of. <laughs> a, dandy. Yeah, a Scottish dandy. A Scottish dandy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my mind went anyway. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, he, so yeah, so this, uh, yeah, this laird of, of the land um, thought that he'd seen a woman in a lake on his property and, you know, rightly went to go and help her. And uh, as he, you know, as he went to sort of make his approach, he's mm. uh, stopped in his tracks by one of his servants who, who stopped him and warned him that it was actually a mermaid and not sort of a damsel in distress, if you like. Um, at noticing that her, you know, sort of plans had been thwarted, the mermaid began to scream at them, um, essentially annoyed that that she didn't get to yeah. kill him. Because again, that's a, a sort of a, a sort of a belief. Is well, that if you'd... that was my goal, I'd be a bit annoyed and all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'd be like, swine. <laughs> um, you know, it's, 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 so yeah, it's kind of believed that you know they either use their beauty or their song to sort of lure, typically men into mm. into the water, or in this case pretending to you know sort of drown so some will swim in to sort of help them it's definitely predatory then, and then isn't they it? yeah the mermaid will then drown you know the man for his troubles so but yeah that's, so that's quite sinister that seems, so that's not a, a sea water no. one no it's a freshwater one isn't yeah. it yeah yeah so you think they're all out at, you know sort of the deepest oceans and stuff whereas yeah this is actually an account of a well, yeah, s- scotland seems to have uh, quite a, a a few they're like that one comes to mind a yeah freshwater monster yeah exactly yeah which uh i'm sure we'll cover at some point yeah no doubt um now in irish uh folklore the liban um would appear as a a pure sanctified mermaid um this was following her baptism of course by christians when uh, christianity reached uh, ireland um now lee means beauty um in old irish uh, with ban Meaning of woman, which um, makes sense as well because banshee means banshee woman of means woman. the faith, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's again all very yeah. interconnected. Interesting. Um, although they are obviously completely different entities, yeah. Supposedly, supposedly, yeah. Supposedly. As I'd have you believe. Um, <laughs> now there was, uh, yeah, a, a young the, the, the sort of the start of the Liban uh, is based on a, a family. Uh, in Ireland, who were drowned, and uh, only uh, one daughter uh, survived by taking shelter in an underwater chamber uh, where she lived for about a year. Um, after this point, um, she transformed into a being of, of half woman and half salmon. Um, so not just half fish. Very specific. They were specific with the, the type of fish. A salmon. So salmon. Yeah, I don't know if it's because the colouring or something of uh, some I salmon. Suppose they're, both, be more they're both saltwater and freshwater, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and, and that, and obviously, I think Scotland, um, sorry, that, that part of the world, Ireland, yeah. uh, parts of Scotland, obviously known for that sort of fishing and stuff. So I don't know if that's, that's got any... pretty big bloody salmon, but, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it just seemed a little, um, yeah, a little too specific, I thought, mm. which, was, which was quite odd. Um, now... Interestingly, once uh, baptized, she was then given the Christian name of Mulgrin, um, meaning Much better. <laughs> meaning yeah, meaning seaborn. Um, and to this day, uh, she even has a celebratory day uh, in Ireland of the twenty seventh of January. All right, where they celebrate the the Liban or Liban, um, which I thought was quite um, interesting. Yes, they, cool. they believe it to such an extent well, that it's actually got its own. Well, we've said this before of, about about Irish culture, like the mm. the old Irish culture. Um, the, they don't let go so easily. No, like the no, the, definitely not. The Christian Church, the Catholic Church, is it's really not been able to conquer them completely. Which no. is <laughs> they'll let you think you've conquered sort of enough yeah. or a little bit, but they still, still believe have, in their old world. They'll believe what they believe, and, and no one's going to sort of tell them different, yeah, <laughs> sort of thing. No matter how hard you try, a it wild would seem. people, some might say. Yeah, exactly. That's cool though. I like that. I yeah. like that they've been able to hold on to all that ancient stuff. And yeah, exactly. And they celebrate it as yeah, well. The, yeah, the yeah. fact that they do celebrate it, that they it's still very much a part of their culture. I think that's great. Yeah, exactly. Because it's probably one of the only ones that I've certainly found that actually has a, you know, celebratory day or mm. you know, still has some sort of meaning to that, you know, that culture or, or part of the world. So, yeah, I, I quite like that one um, as well. Um, now there is. Um, there is an English one, um, much of a muchness really, but that that's uh, 
down in Cornwall, um, and that's uh, yeah, local legend regarding a, a mermaid, um, where she fell in love with uh, a local choir singer, um, and she tempted him um, once they'd, I think, they'd got married, to follow her into into the water, and uh, apparently to this day, in uh, in a certain cove in uh, in Cornwall, you can still hear them singing uh, together. That's cool. Um, Apparently, so yeah. If you go to, uh, annoyingly, I couldn't find the name of the the, the cove. Um, I'm sure if you ask about some of the but, uh, yeah, like you, tourist spots and whatnot, yeah, I'm they sure they'll probably point you in, in the right direction. Right direction yeah, that's cool though. I like that. So um, yes, yeah, so that's one. Um, the Isle of Man had a, a variety of stories, um, but again, it was all much of a muchness. There was nothing really that stood out, mm. um, but they all showed um, mermaids in a, in a positive light. Like it was, you know, it was nice to see one, or if you spotted one you brought you good luck or yeah. good fortune something like that so um yeah far too cheery for me so uh <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> ever the optimist absolutely uh, absolutely um now yeah kind of venture um sort of further afield um into uh into europe um this one in particular um Mostly because it made me laugh um, <laughs> hmm. was the was the, was the one that jumped out at me, um, and it's regarding a a German philosopher. Um, now I'm going to read you his name um, because that's the bit that made me laugh. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try and uh, <laughs> right. So I'm going to try and say it. so. His his philosophical name was Paracelsus. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, it's pretty pretty standard, really. Yep. Um, but his born name. <laughs> Before you do, I go love on. the fact that they've got a philosoph- like a philosopher's name, like a stage, like a stage name that name, they go yeah. under. Like Adele, Beyonce. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah, just a it's single just name. Paracelsus. It's very, well, yeah. it's very deep. But when you hear his name, you can be forgiven f- for go picking for a stage name. Go for because it. you'd probably want to. But uh, So his full born name was Philippus Aurelius <laughs> Theoprastus Bombastius. Von Hohenhelm. <laughs> Bombastius. Bombastius. Excellent. <laughs> no, yeah. I would have just gone with that, oh, yeah, to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Theo yeah. Bombastius. Mr. Bombastius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Bombastius. Honestly, yeah. That's fantastic. So you can understand why you went with Paracelsus, because it was it had a, it's nah, got a better ring to it. Nah, Paracelsius doesn't it? it don't. For a philosopher... Bombastius. Yes. But for every other reason, no. He it could have brought out a couple of records, funded Bombastius. his research. Bombastius Aurelius. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the name I would have gone with. That's, so. that's what I'm naming the next child. Sorry, Sam. Yeah. But that's, uh... <laughs> You've got to do it now. You've got to <laughs> At do least it. as a middle name. So, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, so he... So, yeah, Paracelsus uh, spawned the idea that... Um, the water elemental um, could acquire immortality um, if they married a human. Um, and it was this belief that inspired one of the most famous literary works by Hans Christian Andersen, of course, The Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid yeah. which uh, was then sort of dramatised by uh, Mr. Walt Disney, mm. as, uh, as we all know. Um, Made it a lot more PG, that's for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. Putting it lightly, <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. I mean, we won't go into it now because that could be a, a podcast on its own. But uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. If if you think you know the Little Mermaid by the Disney film, um, then yeah, go and you read go, go and read yet. the book because <laughs> it. I mean, I only read a, a sort of a like, kind of like the cliff notes mm. of the original um, story, and it is dark. It's it's horrific, and <laughs> yeah, it really it's, dark. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like the the mermaid's transformation into a human. Yeah, is. Fucking horrific! It's horrendous. Yeah, yeah. it's actually it's, it's like it's painful <laughs> to and read the it. sacrifice. <laughs> well, yeah, painful to read it, but obviously painful. Of, you know of what the, he kind of went through and the sacrifice that you know that she made to to do that. And yeah, so it's not quite as um, as fluffy as we think. But I mean, it would make an awesome film. <laughs> but I don't yeah, think it would have made quite the Disney it. film that yeah, it made. <laughs> Disney can't do that one. It'd be like an R-rated, yeah, like the <laughs> like the Grimm sort of tales. Yeah, and it'd be along those sort of lines. Yeah, that's um, that's what they need to. They need to get involved with. Don't do the talking about reboots. Reboot the Disney films based on their origins. Yes, yes. <laughs> they need an a... actual company to come yeah. out and do that, like Disney After Dark. Yeah, or exactly. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Disney After Dark. 
yeah absolutely yeah. no I, I yeah i'd agree with that definitely um so yeah so the, yeah the, I, I guess because of the the links to obviously the little mermaid that was you know obviously the main reason why i brought it up but also the mm. philosopher's name did make me uh make me chuckle so i thought it was wor- uh, a worthy mention um Bob now Christus. a little bit more of a, a sort of a, a legend potential real world um oh, okay in uh so back over to to greece um the sister of alexander the great thessaliki um was made immortal um it was initially believed that that she had died um but it yeah has since turned out that that wasn't necessarily the case but uh this happened when um her brother was he alexander the great brought back a flask containing water from the fountain of immortality and i guess sort of unknowingly didn't really think about it he he when she was bathing he bathed her hair in some of the water from this flask mm. maybe not necessarily knowing what would sort of happen maybe because he only used a little bit i don't know um but when alexander died um his grief stricken sister attempted to take her own life by again jumping into the sea um however instead of drowning she became a mermaid um so i'm guessing that's where the, that's the that. death thing people saw a sort of attempt suicide maybe never see her resurface but then she actually transformed mm. into a mermaid and sort of swam off and yeah so that, that's it's kind of where the conflicting stories um, couldn't possibly mean that she was dragged away by an undercurrent or <laughs> washed out to well, yeah sea. exactly yeah but well, that'd be far too easy and <laughs> nowhere near as interesting yeah <laughs> it's true um but yeah she would uh for centuries she would encounter um sailors and pass judgment upon them uh, she would ask them one simple question is alexander the king alive now if they answered with uh he lives and reigns and conquers the world specifically that answer then she would let the crew sail on in safety and you know you'd hear nothing more of it Mm. however if you answered with anything else then (laughs) if you answered with anything else she would then turn into what's been quoted as a raging gorgon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've seen that film. <laughs> yeah, so have I, but I think it might be a different film. <laughs> Again, post watershed. <laughs> Raging Gorgon. Raging Gorgon. And just for context, because <laughs> I think it's needed, um, a Gorgon is basically what Medusa was. Um, okay, but so, yeah, not what I was thinking. No, not what, <laughs> neither. No, no, it's not what I was thinking either. <laughs> Um, I've seen a raging gorgon in my time, and it definitely <laughs> weren't that. You didn't want to see it. I didn't want sure. to see it either. Yeah, <laughs> you can't unsee it either. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- I, this was uh, th- it was two of them originally, and then when um, when Thessaliki uh, transformed into one, it then became they then became a trio. And so what would happen is they would she would then turn into all three of of these uh, gorgons, and would just destroy the ship. Sending it to the bottom of the ocean, drowning all the men on board. Right. Uh, it's just raging gorgon. Just man. A raging, it's doing, yeah, yeah, it's got me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I chuckled at that as well. Believe it. Funnily enough, and I knew you would, which is why I sort of oh. I pre-chuckled. Oh, up here for thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I thought you'd enjoy that one, um, as I'm sure our listeners would as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If nothing else, then for our yeah. immaturity, at yeah, oh, laughing at that. Right. So, um, yeah. Either way, <clears throat> a laugh is a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, scooting over to uh, Eastern Europe, um, there is a version of mermaids known as uh, Rasalka. Um, the name, which I believe is Slavic, um, mm. but again influenced by uh, Christianity, um, relates to the Pentecost. Um, which, if you don't know, uh, is a day which uh, celebrates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles um, and other followers of uh, JC himself, or Jesus Christ to, to, to everyone, unless you're a friend or whatever. You know, it's JC, JC. the big man. Yep. Yeah. Um, We're taking J Dog. So. Yeah, take it exactly. Yeah. <laughs> J <J-Dog>. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, they are believed to be uh, spirits of the unclean dead. Um, 
They are usually uh, the ghosts of young women who died in a violent or untimely death, um, perhaps by murder or suicide, uh, but specifically before their wedding, and it was especially by drowning. So if, if it was untimely or if it was a violent death, mm. it would be drowning would be involved in some but in some way. What I mean, what does that make that un- unclean? Though that's like. Well, uh, I'm guessing be- because it was before their wedding, so they hadn't been. So, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm not religious, so I don't get it. But I'm guessing it's because maybe they weren't betrothed to a man, so they were a lesser woman, maybe or something. Probably, I don't know. Yeah, so it's sounds kind of messed right, up thing it? that would happen. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I don't know that for sure. I'm, that's just kind of yeah. What just, I, I just presumed from well, what I was that expecting meant, there was to be like something else involved in that. Well, but f- not from what I could see. No, it just it seemed to specifically happen before they were married, uh, and it would be even an untimely death presuming that you know that means that they were young mm. or it would be violent um unclean dead I, again I, I don't know christianity is involved so i'm guessing it's got to mean that because they were unmarried they were maybe seen as that mermaid is the devil the devil there you go that's where the unclean bit comes <laughs> in. exactly yeah exactly right yeah um yeah but that's what i'm presuming anyway yeah. I, don't, I don't know for sure yeah um, it doesn't make sense otherwise yeah no exactly um now it's believed that they um inhabited uh, lakes and river, rivers um now they appear as beautiful young women with pale green hair and pale skin um they would sing calling out to young men luring them into the water um sometimes even singing their name um and yeah if they managed to lure them into the water um they'd drown them Quite, quite simply, yeah, yeah, just straight I up, get. drown them. Yeah, so no, a, no other purpose, but yeah. It's a regular thing. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, going a bit bit sort of further afield, um, we've got, uh, I, I went, I sort of looked at various kind of stories from mm. sort of China, Korea, Japan, and, uh, and Southeast Asia. Um, now, they've all got similar stories, which is why I've sort of lumped them together a little bit, but it was, it was basically a fisherman catching mermaids um, and either releasing them or marrying them. Now, if they release them straight away, then the mermaid would reward them for their kindness with either a gift or uh, some sort of help or advice to cure an illness. Now, that would either be an illness that the fishermen themselves were suffering with or Mm. possibly like a loved one. Gotcha. Something like that. Um, However, if they chose to marry them, then... Not much else happened, really, other than that the mermaid would return to the water upon the death of the human that she'd married. Gotcha. So she'd be like, I've, I've done my time. I'm off now. See you later. Uh, bye-bye. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, bye-bye now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Like I say, the, all the stories were kind of much of a muchness, really, of, of, of that kind of scenario, really. Gotcha. Um, well, not much uh, sort of deviation. Um, now, just to end this sort of segment on a couple of uh, sort of real-world um, sightings, most of uh, both of which probably most people would have heard of um, in okay. some form or another. Um, but famously, in 1493, um, off the coast of Hispaniola in the Caribbean, um, Christopher Columbus uh, claims to have spotted three mermaids uh, which at the time he claimed weren't as beautiful as it had been reported. So he was uh, <laughs> he was rather disappointed. <laughs> right. um, now, this was mostly due to... So his disappointment, sorry, was mostly due to um, the masculine features um, on their faces. Um, now, although not proven, it was kind of later determined that he'd actually spotted manatees. Right. Which, um, yeah, if anyone's seen a, a manatee which i'm sure we all have yeah yeah they yeah. are quite grotesque blessing yeah yeah certainly wouldn't depict the beautiful mermaid Actually, that you'd been told about i remember so. seeing them when I, I spent a bit of time in florida didn't i you know, yeah that's right i remember seeing them like yeah. only only once yeah only i remember seeing it once yeah but i don't know it seems like it'd be a hard case to mistake mistake it, it yeah for a mermaid the only thing i'm thinking is that back then maybe manatees hadn't been discovered or or hadn't been 
because remember, like he went into uncharted waters, didn't he? So mm. was he the first or one of the first to see them? And maybe they hadn't been but the thing discovered is, they, or identified. Well, they look very much like walrus. They and do. Like, yeah, walrus are yeah. in the the northern parts of Europe. So yeah. as a as a as a sea captain yeah. or a sea general, I can't remember what his uh, what his actual his title, was, title yeah. was, but he would have sailed quite a few, and he probably would have seen creatures like that. So. I don't know. Would he have? Yeah, I don't know. You'd yeah. I mean, I'd I'd agree with you. You'd think that for you know, sort of um, a fairly experienced, you know, sort of sailor or explorer, he would have known or been been able to identify that it at least was a mammal, maybe if not manatee by name, then yeah, mm. related to walrus or seal or, or something yeah. like that. But then I'm also thinking, you know, if it is the first time they've been seen, we know what the size of you know some of these ships were. If he's looking down from you know sort of a height and he just sees it kind of under the surface of That's the water, you know, could you be forgiven for not making that connection? Well, at least, it, at least this know, time, this explanation wasn't an owl. Yeah, at least it wasn't a, a sea <laughs> owl or sea owl. something. Yeah, something <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> or a giant water salamander. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, that, so yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it's not necessarily been proven one way or another um, whether it was a manatee or whether it was in fact. You know, mermaid. He he kept a number of logs um, that that spoke of his sighting and and by yeah. extension his disappointment. Um, but yeah, the people have just thought, well, it's probably just a manatee, and then kind of brushed it aside, as typically people do yeah. when they want to sort of debunk something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's probably that. They just dismiss it in a lot of cases. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what it seems that has, that's been done. Um, now the only other one, um, just to go into, um, which surprised me actually because I didn't actually think that this guy was real. I thought it was a like a collection of stories. Yeah, or basically, yeah, like a, a Pirates of the Caribbean character, or yeah, or just Captain something Jack Sparrow. Exactly, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. But basically, English pirate Edward Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard. So he was actually real, <laughs> right? Has uh, several logbooks um, that recount sightings of merfolk uh, by him and his crew, um, and these sightings were sort of that frequent and got to a point where Blackbeard himself would actually tell his crew to steer clear of chartered waters, which he would call enchanted, um, for fear of finding merfolk um, and specifically mermen who he thought brought about bad luck um well it makes perfect sense doesn't it really i'm guessing yeah it's he doesn't want to wake up the raging gorgons <laughs> no, no, yeah <laughs> you never want to come across a raging gorgon that's for sure um but uh, apparently it was believed that um and as we sort of discussed in the opening of the episode um that mermen don't really have much of an origin if any and mm. no real sightings that's right so it was believed that if you saw a, a merman that was really bad luck because they weren't really believed to exist. Whereas if you saw a mermaid that were more frequent, it was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Mm. You know, and each one would have its own kind of tale, whether it was good luck, bad luck or whatever. But um, yeah, mermen in particular were sort of brought about more bad luck. Yeah. Um, But not only that, um, but they also thought that they would be um, bewitched by merfolk um and you know sort of tricked into giving up their treasure or any valuables that they may have found on their on their journeys and they would then yeah be dragged to the bottom of the sea so not only would they be robbed <laughs> but yeah. they would be drowned as well for for their troubles yeah Sounds so right. um yeah exactly yeah um so yeah so i thought that was really interesting mostly because it seems that blackbeard the pirate is real yeah <laughs> that was the thing that kind of got me um and then yeah, well, then yeah, see the, yeah then, all cartoons and kids stuff and stuff like they all talk about a pirate Blackbeard. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. so you just think it's just a, a iteration that mm. everyone will know and recognise, and so it's easy just to put into a film yeah, or a cartoon or. Well, the thing is, there's you know, loads whatever. of there's loads of characters like that throughout history that are very similar. The one that always comes to mind for me is Ragnar Lothbrok. That's the yeah or, or Lodbrok. It depends on how you want to pronounce yeah. that last name because it, it seems like there's loads of people that. Um, attributed being a son of Ragnar. Yeah, I believe to actually be an ancestor. Of um, or relative, and then, yeah. but then there's been no actual trace of yeah, being of, able to exactly him. find who yeah. this Ragnar Lothbrok was. Yeah. Um, and it seems like all these collection of stories could have been of various different people. Yeah. Doing amalgamated these acts into one then, person. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, but this actually, he actually has a name. It's cool. An actual born name, and he's yeah, he's actually existed, and yeah, so th- that surprised me the most with it. But and so that's why I wanted to include it for sort of twofold because it was a real life, you know, real world sort of sighting. Not only that, it can be attributed to a person that actually existed, mm. and there are logs that actually existed where he'd penned these, you know, sort of beliefs and and sightings and whatnot. So yeah, so I thought that was quite. Um, but both of those actually were quite interesting. And yeah, I and think had some sort of credence from to another, the idea. To looking at that another angle from like his journals and stuff like that, would he have at that time really have thought about, oh, these are going to get published or something like this? You know, maybe I could publish these as stories or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. If he's, a, if he's a pirate, he's not going to be coming into land and trying to enterprise and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't think so pirates were that... Would have sort if those to, are his personal journals. Yeah, he's, like just for him to keep track. Potentially, he's putting down what he's seen. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, as you rightly say, he's not looking to come ashore and you know be the next literary genius or no, they'd string him Shakespeare up. or what. Yeah, he'd, yeah, probably he'd get put in prison or hung, drawn, and quartered for blasphemer or something. You know, yeah. something along those lines. The blasphemer. So, um, yeah. So no, I thought they were interesting to kind of end on um, the, the sort of the, the history and. Mm. you know kind of origins part just to kind of add a bit of credence and and yeah make it less kind of fantastical and, and fairy tale yeah. and actually be like you know there are actually some famous guys that they've looked into might it actually have seen it yeah. yeah that's interesting it's been yeah. throughout history as well as we know there have been plenty of hoaxes we do there's been plenty of them yeah and we absolutely. came across quite a few of them didn't we yes in, in our little bit of researching yes we did yeah um, and I came across this one, and most people, when they do research mermaids and such, they're quite likely going to find this case come up, and unfortunately, it has been proven a fake, or a yes. hoax at the very least. Whether Absolutely. or not it was because of this particular gentleman or not, or whether he bought into the idea of it. Yeah. But um, it's a guy by the name of Phineas Taylor Barnum. Yes. Um, who lived uh, between 1810 and 1891. He did, and, and just to... Uh, just to chime in yeah. quickly, if you don't mind. Um, if any listeners are hearing that name and thinking, that sounds familiar, then you're right. It it should be, because it was the character portrayed by none other than Hugh Jackman in the uh, the film The Greatest Showman. Oh, right. Yeah. The same, really? Uh, yeah, the same P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Oh, the old uh, ringleader sort of thing. The old cir- yeah, circus guy. Yeah, he, he, opened, he actually did open his own... Yeah, circus yeah. where he looked for freaks and the weird and wonderful and sort uh, of then sort of branched into like kind of museum stuff so yeah yeah, yeah he's actually absolutely. again yeah he's actually a real guy it's not just a oh Hollywood. i didn't even realize that yeah man no i had yeah. no idea because I, well, I haven't seen um the greatest showman so it's no like, oh, okay i've had no real reason to watch it. everyone else around me has and no i'd imagine not i'm, yeah. I'm not i must say i'm not too keen on musicals and, and the such and no, no, I'm not. I know fair. some of the songs. No. I will know a song that comes from it. Oh, you'll on recognize it. Radio. Yeah, you'll you know. definitely recognize uh, <laughs> songs from it. But yeah, I mean, I, as you know, I'm not a fan of uh, of uh, musicals and it's not what I've all heard. that all that gu- stop it <laughs> and all that gubbins, uh, you know, myself. But um, yeah, it's it's not bad for a, for a, a film. It's it's catchy, which is annoying. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's, it's worth a watch, man. Especially now that you've actually yeah kind of looked into him a little bit. I mean, surprisingly. The story you're about to go into doesn't actually feature in uh, no. in the film. Oh, I've actually got two but, stories. Uh, about oh, two. Him, but I'm going to tell oh, okay. the first one now. Oh, go on then. And then a little one that might actually add a little bit of uh, credence to him. Oh, uh, nice. Because okay. this one certainly paints him as a hoax. So yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So uh, he famously exhibited the Fiji mermaid, which was um, a mummified creature that featured. Uh, a hairy torso with um, pendulous breasts. Oh, so it's lovely. Yeah. Th- it's a description. Description. <laughs> You're not judging. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mouth was wide open and its teeth were bared. So yeah, I suppose right. what you can expect of like a like a mummified create uh, mummified creation or something like that. Mm. So the right hand. So this is a bit of a description of what it looks like. You can right. go online and check out Fiji mermaid. Yeah, it's weird. Um, and it's F E E J E E. Mermaid. Um, now the right hand was placed un- against its right cheek, and the left tucked under its lower left jaw. Um, and Barnum described it in his journals yeah. as an ugly, dried-up, black-looking diminutive specimen around three feet long. 
Its mouth was open, its tail turned over, giving the appearance of having died in great agony. Yeah. And it does look like It does that. look, yeah, it doesn't look like it was a, a peaceful uh, death. No, yeah. and, and it's he, he acquired it in, um, I believe, in the uh, 1830s. And he acquired it from an American sea captain by the name of Samuel Barrett Edes. Right. Um, who bought it from a Japanese sailor for six thousand dollars. Wow. So no, I mean that would be enough fortune. Yeah, I mean that would be a lot of money today for something like that. Yeah. Never mind back in the eighteen hundreds. Well, I, I mean I'm sure someone like, an, like someone out there that has a, an economic mind will be able to do the what, backtrack the value. The value of what it would be of today. Now, yeah. I'm sure it's some. It's got to be like in the millions. You will, something yeah. like that. Definitely. Absolutely yeah. incredible amount of money to be spent on it. However. However. It was a hoax. It was, wasn't it? It was a hoax. <laughs> now, it is turned out. So once he actually got it and it, it, he he did, every, he did everything with it. So before he had the museum, mm. he would actually rent this specimen out to people and so they right. could showcase it at parties oh dinner parties and, look at yeah. my mermaid yeah you yeah know, it, you can imagine the, the types that would do it as well exactly you? Yeah. yeah you know it's, this is like the same sort of time where they would have like a, a homeless man that lived in a shed in their back garden so they could show their friends that they had a home, uh, yeah. oh yeah look look at my homeless man yeah look how good i am to him yeah. he can sleep in my coal shed yeah you know it's, it's that exactly sort of yeah showing that off. mindset yeah um and he would uh he, again he would rent at uh 12 pound at twelve dollars fifty um a week. Right, okay. So he was earning a nice little little pinch on that as well. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was it's turned out that the specimen was composed of the torso and head of a juvenile monkey. Yep. Hence the hairiness. Yep. Um and it was sewn onto the back half of a fish. Yeah. So it's yeah. We don't know what species of fish or anything like that, but it's quite a large one at like three foot long. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Now, there have been people that tried to um, try and get some sort of uh, positive out of it, and yeah. uh, scholars have said that, or oh, maybe um, these Japanese soldiers, they, they, uh, the sailors, even they, they made it as like a, as a, a religious idol, and you know they yeah. passed it on and they sold yeah, it. Yeah. I just, I think no, I they were onto something. Done. Yeah, and they went. They look, saw look a at stupid this, white man and look thought, at him with his big eyes. Yeah, boys. Yeah, that. <laughs> let's 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 sell him this this stupid monkey fish. Thing. There's a quick buck to be made here. Yeah, you yeah. still got that dead monkey? You got yeah. <laughs> bring it here. <laughs> you got that dead monkey. I've got an idea. <laughs> I've got half a fish. You got a dead monkey. <laughs> yeah. Are we thinking? Are we? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stupid yeah. Westerner. Yeah. Let's, look at this uh, stupid American. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's uh, let's feed him a, a nice little tail. I think that's absolutely what what happened. Yeah, yeah absolutely what happened. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and there's um, there's been quite a few hoaxes over the years as well, and uh, some of the quite a lot of the British museums are still housing them, and they're still showing them. Yeah, but luckily enough, as hoaxes. So, but I don't think many real life specimens would actually get into um, museums anyway. But this one no. is the Booth Museum in Brighton. And it's yeah. home to a hoax mermaid uh, who was brought back to Britain by a traveller to the Southeast Asia yeah. at the end of the 19th century. So, again, yeah. not too Same sort different, of era, yeah. that sort of era. And this particular mermaid, which looks to have uh, been have its top half carved out of wood, I'm sure you would notice that if you yeah. were you know, buying it, with the addition of some monkey parts and a scaly tail for the rest of his body, had been sold by a trader as a genuine mermaid. Yeah. So it seems like that sort of area mm. when the Europeans started investigating and exploring yeah. those parts. Going to that the, part uh, of the world a lot more and they saw a cash cow every time they pulled into the port. <laughs> the locals saw an opportunity. Yeah. It was a well done well, to them. There you go. Absolutely, yeah. There's one in the Science Museum in London. Is there? As well, yes. Um, wow. And it's uh, it, it seems like it was based off of a Javanese goddess. Okay. Which is a quite an interesting one. So this one might not be a hoax. This one might actually be an idol of some sort. Okay. So this merman um, mm. is actually dated to the 19th century again. Okay. And it's from the Netherlands this time. So it's created as a fake... I don't know how this quite works. A fake goddess statue, which is an odd one. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's it was bought as a fake merman. 
Right, okay. So this is, I think it may have been created as, as, uh, a, hoax, as a tribute. Deliberately. Oh, right. No, as a tribute, a tribute to like oh, a goddess right, okay. and then sold as a genuine merman. Right. Um, so this particular creation um, has a slightly more convoluted history as a forged object, like I said. Yep. It was originally created as a European fake of a statue of a Javanese goddess, Lara Kidal, who was associated with skin diseases and was supposed to protect sailors from drowning. Right. So, Bit of an odd mix. Yeah, I'll give you a skin like, disease, but I'll save you from drowning. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the price you get. <laughs> that's the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it, you know, it's kind of the opposite of what we know about mermaids. Yeah, like exactly, you fall into yeah. the water, they're going to drag you down. This one, yeah, it might bring you back up, but you'll get a skin yeah. disease out of it. Yeah. So you got to weigh up your options, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Which is probably what we now know as eczema, but back then it probably would have been yeah, seen as some sort of scaly. Or something like that. Scaly skin sort of grey scale thing, yeah, or yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> make you go mad, sir. Yeah, exactly. Um, however, it was bought as a um, as a merman, a genuine right. merman, made, um, and it's from Asia uh, to be sold to a gullible European sailor by the agents of Sir Henry Wilcom, a pharmaceutical entrepreneur and an avid collector of all things strange, which seemed uh, to be. Okay. Which seemed to right. be the so case of be like Barnum then, yeah. It the seems sort like of business, the weird and wonderful and the showy off. The nineteenth sort of century seemed to be like that. Really, yeah. they, they were going. That seems to be where they were really exploring the majority of the world, um, yeah. Past Europe, mm. really, and coming across all these various different legends and yeah. artifacts and and stuff. And I think a lot of stuff did get convoluted and got kind of chucked in together. Yeah, because uh, again, that was yeah. that, I think we mentioned it before. That was about that same sort of time when there was the the dinosaur wars, where yes, yeah. they're digging up all these bones and everything, and they're attributing mm. it. To, oh, I found that first, so yeah. Or oh, this is similar so to mine. the one that yeah. Matey just found, but I'm going to call it something else. Yeah, um, and that's quite interesting actually. That uh, is, to, yeah. to uh, the the species of dinosaurs that we think are separate might actually mm. be the same dinosaur at different stages in its in its life. Yeah. Um, Back yeah. to the subject. We'll, at yeah, hand. we'll cover that later. Yeah, we'll cover that <laughs> yeah. in another one. That'll maybe be a different episode. <laughs> but yeah, it's really quite interesting when you look into that as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, another one comes from Ol. 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 Oh, Ol to the rest of the world. The rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Ol. Ol. Uh, it's the Maritime <laughs> Museum, and it's home to a bizarre creature which measures. That, yeah, uh, that's just the locals. Just you can't the call locals. them that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the bizarre creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and for the museum. <laughs> Uh, and it, now in the museum, it's this bizarre creature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a bit more specific, yeah. uh, which measures nearly two feet in height. Um, oh, wow. Is uh, is a mummified corpse of a mermaid, right. and it has eerie white eyes that stare out at the visitors. Its mouth hangs open, and its petrified body is covered in a grey brown skin. Now. Right. Originally, it was believed that the whole mermaid dated to the 17th or the 18th century. Okay. A little bit older. Yeah, yeah. Touch older. A little bit. But after it was x-rayed in the 1930s, it... Thirties. 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 Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> in the 1930s. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, sound as, doesn't sound right now. I don't know. It doesn't. I'm going to say it like that now. In the 1930s, <laughs> it was discovered to be the body of a fish wired together with the head of a monkey right so okay. it didn't even have like a, a torso of a monkey it's just a just, fish just with a monkey head. head which is worse but I'm, I'm thinking the only i'm thinking why a monkey what, like if you're gonna do it why would you but i'm thinking maybe because there's some sort I of relation to looking like half human well this is the thing i think by that point they'd already realized that we were that we're primates if you start stitching dead humans to fish it doesn't you gotta find a fish big enough you got well yeah or human small enough Sadly, which is yeah. quite macabre. Thought, yeah, but you know what? I think that could very well have been the case. Do you reckon people have tried that? No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Because I think, like, did they then settle on small primates because it was easier to kind of? Well, they're easier to catch. Show. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Trigger warning. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's um, yeah. I think you're right. I think that, that small people were probably much much harder to find mm. than. Than a giant back fish, then, imagine, yeah. or okay. a monkey. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Okay, uh, but the British Museum also has one. Does now, it really? um, it's also home to another mermaid, um, said to be caught more than two hundred years ago, and this mermaid was actually made in Japan during the Edo period. Now, the Edo period stretches from sixteen o three to eighteen sixty seven. 
Okay. Um, so potentially all these other ones were made in exactly the same period. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's composed of the upper part of a monkey's body and a fishtail. So again, yeah. Either in that time, if it was made 200 years ago and it was made in that, that time period, maybe, maybe there was a particular Japanese sailor yeah, it's making a fucking killing. Yeah, <laughs> absolute fortune, ripping off Rip stupid it. westerners. Yeah. yeah, these stupid Europeans yeah. that were coming in looking for all these stories of mermaids and everything. They go, ah, oh, look at this. It's, yeah, it's, six, it's interesting. Six thousand dollars, yeah. please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because they, they might. Have you got another one to go into, or? Um, no, 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 no. Go Only for because, it. Um, and there might be, there might be a link as to why they maybe started doing this in terms of c- creating these. Okay. Either like deliberate hoaxes or these uh, these tributes. Yeah, go for it. Um, but basically, in in Japan, um, there were divers known as Ama or Amar. A M A is how it's spelt. I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Mm. Okay. Um, but they uh, they're also known as skin divers, um, and traditionally they would dive for shellfish and uh, seaweed wearing only a loincloth basically gotcha um now it's believed that they've been around for about 2000 years so it's a practice that's been going on for you know quite some time um and they would operate mostly around the reefs just off off the shore now they were women typically Mm. that would do this diving for fish shellfish and, and whatever else and they would have they would begin whilst diving um, they would begin to put on shows for visitors Ooh. and then eventually tourists. Um, and I've got, this, I've got this image of them all doing synchronized swimming. But, well, yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. yeah. You imagine sort of half naked Japanese ladies in, in the water diving for, you know, shellfish. And, you know, there's a group of people catching things. What are they doing? Mm. And then they thought, oh, we can put on a bit of a show here. So yeah, exactly yeah. right. That's sort of synchronized, synchronized diving, sw- swimming, and swimming in and out of the water. Um, but basically they then romantically became referred to as mermaids because oh. they were always seen to spend so much time in the water. They were always scantily clad, you know, swimming about, yeah. obviously catching fish by hand, presumably, um, whether it be shellfish or, you know, like I say, seaweed, which I think they used for medicinal purposes, mm. didn't they? I think back then, as well as eating it, obviously. Um, so, um, oh, that's yeah, so I just think so, so. Maybe so, so. Japan certainly had their own legends and, and, and such, yeah. And then, but again, there's sort of a, a real world link as to where maybe their legend you know came from. Hmm. And did these fishermen sort of think, or uh, yeah, or uh, you know, sort of divers, fishermen, whatever, did they see an opportunity to think, well, if people are liking this or whatever, let's hmm. start telling them that. If they, you know, yeah, we've got like a we've juvenile got a one that's juvenile or version of us, or a, yeah, or mummified version, or whatever. Because there was that whole like shrunken head thing, so maybe was yeah, like that part of the mummification, which is why they could explain why they were so much smaller. Yeah, either that or they Possibly. caught a juvenile one, maybe. Yeah, or something like that. So I'm, th- I'm sort of thinking, did what was sort of a genuine origin? Mm. Did that then spawn the various examples that you went over with regards to the? Um, you know what, that makes specimens. sense as well, because I remember seeing a video as well that explained some of the Japanese one with regards to the monkey part of it, mm. is that um, it had the, the, the body and tail of a fish, the head of a, of a woman, mm. but the mouth of a monkey. Wow, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Like, and it had like this, um, the old uh, Japanese art thing, and it, it, right. it looked bloody horrific. So right, that might okay. actually explain yeah. why there's the why monkey on it, and why from. they didn't even bother shaving the monkey. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the, the realization as soon as you said it. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Gotta keep it natural. Don't oh shape dear. the monkey. <laughs> oh, natural people. It's, yeah. <laughs> It's how God intended. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Dear oh Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did have a moment. As and soon, scene. <laughs> as soon as it came out, I knew that I should have said it. I saw it. you break straight away. <laughs> 
Is that a sudden realisation you thought, oh no. <laughs> Oh, everyone has their moment. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that's Some mine for today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what but no, you're talk- right, though. What it, we it's a about? wonder. <laughs> yeah, you do. But you still think if you're going to try and pass it off as a as a fake, you would try and make it look a little bit more human, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a good point. I'm trying not to say it. So, you know, <laughs> so it's still there. But yeah, you wouldn't. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's too much hassle, I guess. I don't know. But have you ever seen a mice shaved monkey? <laughs> oh, oh, one yeah. or two. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try and compose myself. I'm really yeah. sorry. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll try. Um, what a sad act! I'm laughing at my own joke again. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, me as well. So at least you're not on your own, I guess. Oh, yeah. Good grief. I don't know if that's better let's or worse. Let's move on from shave monkeys, please. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's move on. Um, I've got an actual hoax, but have you got anything that you want to lead into off the back of what we were just no no of go discussing? For it. Or go could for we... it. Yeah, go for it. yeah. Okay, let's so do the, let's do all the hoaxes now. Okay, so as part of the um, obviously the, the the research, the one thing that I did come across, which I know you only gave a little bit of time to, <laughs> which yeah. will become clear in a minute, um, was uh, an Amazon um, documentary, um, which was done very well, actually. It was dressed, unless you sort of go into sort of certain forums or whatever, it wasn't necessarily clear that it was a fake. Hmm. Um, it was dressed up as though it was, because it was done by a, the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet yeah. back in the day. So it was dressed up as being a, you know, a genuine um, documentary. Um actually used the term because I, th- I thought they would have used something like mockumentary or spoof yeah. or something like that but they actually used the word that actually at the moment escapes me but um <laughs> right. it, 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 it it essentially describes the same sort of thing but yeah. it didn't twig at first because i hadn't it, used that entertainment word. doc or something like that something that, like that yeah i'll have to, as i go through it i'm sure it'll jump it'll back come, in my yeah. mind and I'll, I'll, min- I'll come back to it but um yeah it's, it's you you quickly find out that it's um you know that it is a, a hoax, but it was put together very well. So, you know, kudos to them. But yeah. even if it was just, if it was obviously crap, is that um, the body found? Yeah, Mermaid's so there's actually the body found. yeah. So I think there's actually two. So there was one done back in the late nineties, I think, which was called Mermaids, a, a body found or the body found, something yeah. like that. And then I've not watched it yet, but they've they kind of go back and go over the documentary in, and the, th- in the next one which is called the, next the one, new evidence called, isn't it new evidence right well, absolutely yeah. i did because that the new evidence isn't available on amazon so i had to cause i thought I'd, i'll look at the more up-to-date one i'll try and mm. skip a bit of research and whatnot and i could only find it by going to some obscure streaming site yeah. well, it's actually online. on discovery plus if you've subscribed to that which i'm it's, not it's <laughs> so the first one so the first one a body found is on Amazon, mm. and then the follow-up is on Discovery Plus. Gotcha. But I think it's going to be a series because it said episode one of. So I'm thinking oh. they might be doing a, a series. But the one that I watched is the one on Amazon, which anyone can go and check out. And even though you know it's a fake, um, it's it's a it's a good watch for mm. a fake. It's a good one, but it basically depicts um, a couple of events. But it starts off in 1997 where a group of scientists are uh, recording sounds uh, deep in the Pacific. Um, and they, they pick up the sort of sounds that you'd expect to find. So like hmm. organic is what they refer to it as. Gotcha. Um, so things like whale song, you know, dolphins, you know, that kind of thing. Everything that you expect to hear at, at that kind of depth. Um, but then within that, they, they hear a, an organic sound that, they don't recognise. It kind of stands out from the whale song and the dolphin and everything else. They could never identify it, but they definitely heard it. and They just, I guess, put it on the back burner. There's like a different signature to it. Different signature, yeah. Um, When you look at the sort of the, the, is it the wavelength, they call it, or the the wave pattern on the recording, you can see that it's got a different sort of spike to, you know, kind of the rest of it. So it's more prominent than than the others. They never identify it. It's not, no, uh, but it doesn't belong to a, a mammal or, or creature that they are aware of. Wow. Um, it skips then to 
uh, the early 2000s, um, where the uh, the Navy are testing their sonar equipment mm. uh, or a new sonar equipment that they're looking to, to bring out. And it, it basically ends up causing a mass beaching of whales. Um, of course, at this point, the Navy denied that it's you know their fault and that they used um, hmm. sonar. But of course, it, it's a, a fact that they were responsible well, because people, other people heard it. Yeah, so it's being picked and, up by civilian equipment. Yeah, exactly I, that. Yeah, so they they, they prove they prove straight away that yeah, it was because of what the Navy was it's doing. It's so juvenile, isn't it? Like yeah. you, you've been caught red-handed. But it's just like, no, come no, out and go, as, yeah. you know, we did, you know, we were, you know, testing out a new sonar, more powerful sonar. We didn't realise the effects we, or whatever. Yeah, take yeah. a bit of responsibility. But they just try and, well, they, they don't try, they do, they deny it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, along with the whales, um, other things, other creatures were also washed up on on the shore. Right. Um. Now, it's 2004 um, at this point, and two boys... Two young lads were the first um, to respond to the uh, the beaching when it happened in Washington State. They shot footage on their cell phone and claimed to have found a body. Now, the Navy take the remains of said body and they try to silence the two boys um, and try and force them to change their statements, which I think initially they do manage to achieve. Um I think they offered the parents like an obscene amount of money to make sure that their kids shut up or yeah. change their their statement, as we can imagine is probably true for yeah. you know for you know sort of for real life. Um, this occurred, like I said, on, in two thousand and four on April fourth in Washington State, and it saw the largest mass whale beaching in U.S. history, which I think might actually have happened. So I think there is some oh kind yeah, of, there's definitely there happened, is some yeah. real world. Um, kind of little breadcrumbs mm. which is why it's so well done because there are things and evidence and whatever that has actually been collected and events that actually happened that this they was, kind of interweave into it am i right in thinking this was on the west coast i because i remember don't, it's I, washington I remember, state so wherever that is yeah, yeah, my, geog- my geography is crap i'll be yeah honest, washington so. state is the west coast yeah so that right, would be okay. the pacific coast so yeah well yeah yeah okay yeah that yeah, makes so sense so yeah, that there, did, yeah. yeah that did happen yeah um, so the the new sonar uh, tech uh, used by the Navy basically caused severe trauma to the whales, basically scaring them out of the water um, and slowly killing them. Um, I think they go into a bit of detail a bit later on, and it, it basically caused the whales to basically suffer a brain hemorrhage because they found bleeding from, I guess, where ears would be and... Like an ultrasonic and like yeah, well, exactly. an yeah, attack, yeah, an yeah. Ultra, ultrasonic attack. Isn't yeah, it? basically, yeah. Uh, inadvertently or deliberate, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, had a, a, a water uh, sea boy. I was going to say, water boy. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie Boucher. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't out in the water. Though, like. Um, so yeah, that's so a, a quality H two O. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so had a, a, a boy out at sea um, around the time of the sonar blast, um, and they realised that they'd actually recorded the entire event. So this was how Excellent. they could. This is how they could blame the navy because they actually picked it up on their own equipment. They were just doing a general sonar scan for mm. you know local life or whatever, and just happened to pick up the whole thing. Now on the rec- they play back the recording of the event and basically you hear um, you hear the whales um, doing their usual song and their their cry and uh, they've got a guy on there he's basically a linguist um, and what he's doing is he's recording what we I guess what I refer to as whale song but he's he's basically determining that there is actually a language within the noises that they make so he's actually trying yes. to determine what noises. Noises that refer to what we would call as words, so he can try and pick up the actual conversations that they're having. Yeah, um, yeah, it was all quite clever. Oh, stuff, it's so really, in, they... it's so interesting because you've got various different pods that have like their own accents. Oh, there's, there's different accents. There's different dialects pitches, as well. Dialects. It's it's actual accents. It's very complex like language. Regional, like we do in England, like regional accents. And oh, there's plenty of them. D- well, exactly. Yeah, Wales apparently have the same, and this guy's looking into that to try and essentially script uh, a language. So when they listen to it again, he can actually essentially track a dialogue 
to sort of figure out what they're trying mm. to communicate to one another. So he, you, you hear all that initially, and that's why that they were doing it. So typical well song, you know, quite loud, a few dolphins in there or whatever. And then just silence, but like immediate silence, just cut, dead, nothing. The Oz effect silence. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And, and which they thought was unusual for it to happen so abruptly. And you see the technician playing with like the um, machine, like these headphones, he's messing about with the volume and it's just complete silence. And then you hear essentially what sounds like a machine firing up um it's, it's kind of like a, a like that sort of th- and it's yeah it's clear as day you hear it that that kind of that like thing. an electric motor go, going like um, yeah like the underground like the yeah i guess like yeah. you get the underground like trains as they're setting off setting off or approaching you hear that kind of yeah wow it's, you, you, and you hear that clear as day um and then as soon as that sounds you basically just hear the agonizing cry of the sea life oh in that God. vicinity like and it, it does sound pained like what we would call wailing <laughs> yeah but like screaming crying it, it sounds uncomfortable well, going through like well, they're going through hemorrhages yeah like, basically like yeah, they're, they're slowly being killed by sound waves basically Jesus. so you, you hear that in the um recording uh it, it goes on for some time and you can tell that the guy's quite uncomfortable listening to it yeah. because he knows what's happening to these i'm uncomfortable poor hearing about it yeah, exactly. Um, and he then, like I say, it goes on for some time, but then he, he then begins to hear the cries of another creature. And again, like the original recording in the 90s, it sets itself apart from the other cries and kind of talk and tone and pitch and whatever. Like mm. it, it, It's not like it's been isolated in the recording. Gotcha. So and they've been able you, to get all, all the other bits and pieces out of it. Well, he does that later on, but yeah. it's, it's still, it's so different that even at the, the real kind of real-time recording you can it, hear it, it stands out yeah wow and he's like what the hell was that and that's when they then isolate it specifically remove all the other noise and background and they listen to that and again it's got a different tone a different pitch mm. and it's not anything that he recognizes and he's been tracking a lot of this stuff you know for wow. for sort of quite some time um so yeah they they slow it i think they slow it down to like a third of the speed um and isolate it as i say and they basically determine that there's at least six different voices in this signature and each one has a different tone and pitch so you can clearly tell that it's six individuals six creatures wow communicating um now they they go through a whole host of like debunking and they try to associate it with maybe a different species of dolphin different species of whale you know, like ma- a new pod in, yeah, in the area, uh, sort of. Yeah, thing. exactly that. Yeah, um, or even a new species that hasn't been um, discovered by us yet. Yeah, not just n- new to that area. Um, and uh, they come up with everything. They can't really settle on uh, anything like that mm. um, until one of them comes up with um, what we now know is quite a controversial. Uh, opinion i guess um but it relates to the aquatic ape theory yeah which is what we mentioned earlier on in the in the episode and he basically he puts his stamp on that and he's like i think we've just found you know evidence relating to this you know aquatic ape theory and that's kind of where they settle because they don't have anything else that they can say that's probably that yeah you know they try and debunk it well yeah you know but they they can't basically is, is what they is kind of where they they land on. Um, I didn't write down anything more than that because yeah, I know you knew that I was going to you were going to sort of cover it. it. So um, yeah, yeah. So, so do you want to jump into it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, with um, although before I do go into it because I do oh, okay. want to talk about some of the other um, encounters that I've found as well, and there's one that's okay. a little bit local, and this one connects with a previous name that's right. come up. Okay. So, I kind of want to do a little bit of um, real world sightings as well, but right, obviously okay. keep it fairly, fairly short for time purposes okay. and, and such. But the the first one that I do want to talk about mm. is um, it comes out of Australia, and it's the Great Barrier Reef. Happened in two thousand and nine, and it's the story goes that an Australian man was diving near the Great Barrier Reef when he noticed something swimming around him, 
Yeah. Um, fearing that it was a shark, he swam for a little bit of cover. Now, I can understand that because I've been snorkeling at the very least and mm-hmm. you can only see so far. Yeah. Um, and if there's something swimming around in those shadows, it's mm-hmm. going to freak you out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Now, as he found the shelter, um, he came to realise that it wasn't a shark that was swimming around him. Yeah. But it was an unknown creature with flowing fins. Right, okay. Yeah. Now, he scrambled for his camera. As and, you would. Yeah. And managed to capture this creature on film. Mm. Now, it shows something swimming fairly quickly across the sea floor um, right, okay. and away from him. And it looks like it has two long arms and a huge fish tail. And the, 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 the fins right. are very much like um, uh, those Siamese fighting fish. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, those long, flowing one. ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're great. They're beautiful, they're beautiful, yeah. Beautiful really creatures. colourful. Yeah, very kind of flowy and, yeah, quite majestic in their movement, really, yeah. considering they're a fighting fish. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. But, the, well, it seems like as well that this is like what you would... This is the sort of um, imagery that you would probably expect out of, like, a film or something like that, where you're seeing something floating away, sort of. Um, but it's... What is quite interesting is that various experts have been able to look at the footage yeah. and noted that it hadn't been edited. So it's not yeah. like it's been superimposed. It was undoctored. Was, or, yeah, hadn't been doctored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. An un, yeah, an undoctored, yeah. undoctored footage. Yeah. But also, it doesn't look like whatever it is yeah. is like a human dressed up as a mermaid. Yeah, like so the they knew it wasn't are yeah. different. So it wasn't a human in a mermaid outfit which we know there are a lot of there's plenty of them it's started now isn't it as an actual thing like where women are actually and and getting men really good as well really good like mermaid tails and actually swimming about in tanks like there's yeah. actually at theme parks and stuff there's actually that's right shows yeah. that they do with these people it's so, very clever so you know that it can be done and that was proven to not be that um or anything otherwise identifiable yeah really, wasn't it yeah yeah but this this seems to be like that Marine experts have, have viewed it and gone, yeah, that's not that's consistent not with yeah. humans moving or humans swimming in, in yeah, that exactly, sort of yeah. dolphin style. Yeah. Um, I've got another one, a little bit closer to home. Yeah. Um, 2013, this happened. And um, it was uh, documented by a gentleman by the name of Shlomo Cohen. Right, okay. Shlomo Cohen. Shlomo Cohen, yeah. Um, and he had at least four friends uh, around him, and they were standing on the cliff edge looking out over into the Mediterranean. Right. And they noticed uh, what appeared to be a woman sunbathing on, on the rocks below. Right, okay. Now, initially they thought it was a, a woman, um, but for some reason they decided to get their camera out and start um, actually videoing her. I think it was a bit weird. So, Shlomo, yeah. you've got a few questions to answer there, Sunshine. Yeah, I see it, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And as they zoomed in, they realised that she didn't actually have legs. Right. Um, but she had uh, a dolphin-like tail. Now, right. And a, and a black, streamlined body. So what they wow. thought was like a, a swimsuit. Was actually, actually was her skin, yeah, essentially. absolutely. Oh, wow. Now, the video clip does actually show the mermaid looking back at them. So right. when she know when she realizes that they're up there, mm. and she, it briefly shows a lighter coloured underside or front side. I yeah. guess I guess it'd be underside if she's yeah constantly guess swimming. So, yeah. Um, and with a, a like a like a beating of her tail, she shifts back into the water and under the waves, off she's gone. Right. Okay. Um, now the scientists have been able to analyze this footage, and concluded that. It isn't a human pretending to be a mermaid, as the movements are fully consistent with that of marine mammals, and it's definitely not a seal. So similar to the uh, Australia one, then. Yeah, def. I mean, and how long ago was this? Sorry, 2013. 13. Wow, it's not that long ago mm. at all. And uh, what's really quite interesting as well is the Israeli government. Yeah. Now, what they've done is they haven't just gone, whatever, shlomo. Off your pop, <laughs> yeah. You know, or try to silence him or exactly. shut him up or what anything. they've done is they've actually gone. Oh, that's great. Can we get some more? Um, if you can get some more footage, we'll pay you mm. one point two million dollars as a reward. Wow! So anyone else out there yeah. in the Mediterranean, anyone in Israel listening, get your camera out there. Yeah, get out into that med. Get yourself one point two million dollars. Yeah, go and find it. 
to one point two million dollars. Wow. And to this day, you know, there's got to be some belief. I mean, for governments, to, I mean, whether they're just doing it as a ploy to kind of keep people occupied or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, but, like keep them busy. But for some, for a government to actually come out and almost corroborate what they've found by saying, "Okay, that's great, find some, some more, more, and we'll give you some," which is like a complete you know, give you some money, which is in complete it, contrast, it, isn't it? Complete uh, about. Yeah. yeah, complete contrast to like the American government, like the, the Navy going, it wasn't us. You'd get suicided and your footage would get deleted. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you'd be added to the Clinton count. Exactly, maybe. yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. No. I don't know what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. Forget that. Yeah, scrap that. Yeah, we'll edit yeah. that out. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. That's it. <laughs> um, now, there was uh, another one a lot, lot closer to home and not as wow. quite as recent. Okay. Um, and it happened in 2003, and it was the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, or the RNLI. Oh, okay. And uh, they were performing a rescue exercise in the North Sea. Right, okay. Now, this is quite interesting, this footage, where the on the back of the lifeboat, the camera set up, infrared yep. camera, yep. and in the distance, in the near distance, should I say, over onto the right of the boat, Right, I can't remember that starboard, starboard or, or yeah, port or side port. or I whatever. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. I, I'm not, it's, I'm not a, a sea lover. I'm very much a, got yeah. land legs. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah, um, but what you can see is a pale human-like head and torso rise above the waves, um, and it has glowing eyes. Now, obviously, that's because the infrared light is bouncing it's off of the retinas. Off, yeah, um, and when it gets close to the boat and the um, the 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 coast guard shine their torch on it. Yeah, it instantly dives under the waves and underneath the boat, and they notice it because they can. You see them go like that, shine the torch, and then they jump over to the other side. Right. Okay. Um. Now, marine experts have chalked it up to being just a seal, which it, it, seals are common in our waters, well, especially that area as well. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, we even have common. seals beach up on in south end yeah you know, exactly yeah. quite regularly mm. so with it being a seal yeah, it's an easy enough explanation as long as it's not an owl so <laughs> yeah i'm happy anything with that. other than sea owl yeah <laughs> yeah which uh, it makes sense as well because you know seals eyes glow in inverted yeah. commas you know that because of yeah. the infrared light and such but the one thing that really does set it aside is that this head has what is called a sagittal crest right now a sagittal crest is a ridge of bone that runs down the middle of the top of the skull and it's found in lots of mammals and reptilians, mm. like their okay. skulls and such. Now, the more prominent the ridge, the stronger the bite because it's the 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 ridge itself is like the anchor point for the jaw muscles. Oh, right, okay. So it's it's not necessarily like a, um, a hydrodynamic or an aerodynamic sort of thing. It's in mammal skulls, it is for a strong bite. bite. Right, okay. Um. Now, the two men that are actually in the video mm. later came forward and they said that they thought that they actually saw a man out there. They thought it was a man. Well, and they the, were going to a rescue, so it would... Well, it was only a rescue exercise. This no, was the they, strange yeah, thing. Someone might have been put in there as a uh, as part uh, of the exercise, sorry. Absolutely. So, yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. they'd seen it out yeah. in the distance because they know what they need to look for and they headed straight for it, got the torch on it, and then it went. Mm. So as they got closer to it, obviously they realised that it was something they'd never seen before. Yeah. Um, so this this was stuff that, that got leaked out as well. So maybe the British Navy yeah. are also trying Lots to hide like, things oh, as well. Sure, sure. And again, going back to just quickly, the, like the, the Columbus and uh, Blackbeard ones, mm. same with these guys, lifeboatmen, they're at water all the time. If that was a seal, that's not going to have been the first time that they would have seen one. No, they would have spotted it. They would have spotted it and thought, oh, it's just a seal, and paid it no mind. But the fact that they followed it from one side to the other, they were shining their lights at it, They it obviously piqued their interest. They must have seen something that wasn't recognisable to them. And I would firmly believe that that they're out on the water all the time. Yeah. Different, you know, different parts of the coast and whatever else they they would have seen. Yeah, whales. Oh, it's different. Seals it's different for like before. if you and I were out there. Like yeah, we don't exactly, have yeah. experience in that environment, and no. we saw something. You go, oh, it was the kraken or something like that, yeah, or exactly, like yeah. you know, yeah, it was yeah. the 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 sea monster or something. You know, yeah. but those people are in those environments, and I could uh, again going into a completely different environment with the whole Bigfoot stuff. Yeah, like people that aren't out there all the time. Mm. 
might see something like a bear walking upright, which does happen. Does happen, yeah. And go, holy oh, shit. crap, that's yeah, huge. Yeah. That must be Bigfoot. Yeah. You know, but when you've got like people that are always in that environment. Like a deer hunter or something who's always out there. They know, know the exactly. environment. They know yeah. the noises. They know the sights. They know the yeah. smells. Everything. Yeah. They're experts in that environment. And they come out and say, I've seen something strange. Yeah. You've got to believe them in some you've way, got shape, to take or form. It, yeah. It's, you've got to give it some credit, I guess. Yeah. You've so got, I fully agree yeah. with you there. It's, yeah. it is, it probably adds a bit more credibility to it. Yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly right. Uh, yeah. People are. You know they're capable of hoaxes and, and the yeah, such, of course, but, yeah. but the this is the interesting one. Now I mentioned previously about uh, PC Barnum. You did. I, yeah. This is my second um, mm. story that I've that I've yeah. got regards to him, and this might add a little bit more credence to him, and uh, not just being a hoax or gullible or mm. anything like that. Now, in like the the eighteen forties, there was a mermaid spotted in the Indian Ocean, and he offered a large a large reward for its purchase, a live specimen. And if we uh, we don't know the amount for this one, do no. we? But based on the amount he paid for the first one, for a dead monkey, for a dead monkey, yeah, it was probably quite a substantial. I would reward, say it's probably more it? like so. yeah, more like ten thousand yeah. dollars or something like that. It yeah. Depends on how much money he had left over, really. Well, let's yeah, be exactly. Honest. Yeah. Um, so after issuing this um, this reward, he. A couple of months later, a live specimen actually turned up at his museum. Mm. A live specimen? A live specimen. Three meters long. as a mermaid, and it turned up at the Barnum Museum in 1842. And at that time, the museum had posters everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as this mermaid turned up, he was like, rip them down. We've got a new exhibit. Yeah, yeah. And the mermaid was front and center of every exhibit yeah now again you can go online do an image search uh the uh, barnum museum mermaid mm. and you will see the image that comes up obviously it's not a photograph it's it's a it's a uh, a drawn image yeah exactly. but it gives you an idea as to what to expect now as things always go this might seem a bit coincidental yeah. um a large fire broke out at the museum mm. destroying it and destroying all the artifacts and specimens inside. Well, just again, just to, I suppose, help add a bit of credibility, it's not as coincidental as you might think, only because, as far as we know, that did actually happen. Yes. Um, again, that element is depicted in the film. Um, oh, okay. More so, I mean, I don't know the origins from what you found in terms of how they think the fire started, but certainly in the film it's depicted that um, disgruntled locals who didn't like the circus being in their town mm. um but basically uh caused um arson oh right basically and burnt, Makes sense. And burnt it down yeah. as a way of driving them out so yeah th that the good old for Christian what it's worth it, yeah exactly yeah um so yeah for what it's worth yeah that the fire did actually happen yeah. so it's not like it was a no no not at all so i mean it, it seemed like it mm. it he lost a lot of artifacts and a lot of specimens well ev everything other, other than the live Pete, like the live specimens, i.e., the people that he worked with, so like mm. you know, the, the people that would lady, be hanged. the guy covered in tattoos, the uh, little midget, and the you know, the giant guy, and the, the albinos, and <laughs> right, gotcha. which, which nowadays is just well, okay, pretty normal, but obviously back then it was they were considered part of the freak show. So, yeah. aside from those who actually who escaped it with him, yeah, all the other um, sort of museum artifacts all, all gotcha. perished, yeah. Well, it seems like. I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, okay, right. So the mermaid, you know, got destroyed. Well, right, right, yeah. Destroyed so you, you've yeah. taken all that money. That yeah. that was the thing that That's people convenient. really put forward on it. Yeah. Um, but it seems like in 2010, mm. now in celebration of Barnum's 200th birthday, because he was born in 1810. Yeah. So in 2010, um, a group of people decided that they were going to clean up his old relics and artifacts yeah. and everything else that was left over. Yeah. Um, and they came across some old photos. And the old photos right. showed a three meter long mermaid in a tank. So wow. give you an idea as to what it looked like. Um it kinda looked like the back to tank from Star Wars. You know, oh, right. in yeah, yeah. Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Luke gets taken out by the Wampa and you know, Han it, comes it and saves him. Spoiler him alerts. Up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, they they put him in the back to tank and everything. So that's what yeah. it kinda looks like. Uh, um the specimen is in a back to tank. It looks fucking miserable, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, 
So I'll describe what it looks like, but you can do an Im image search. And it's got a streamlined body, paddle-like tail, like a dolphin's, hands that are very similar to a human's, but with large amount of webbing between the fingers, and a sagittal crest along the top of the skull. Wow, okay. Now, Which the hoaxes didn't have, because no. obviously it was just a, a, a monkey. Absolutely. So, so. this is... Um, this is why I wanted to mention it with the, the British one, the RNLI mm. encounter, that this description, along mm. with um, three gills on either flank as well, oh, wow. Wow. Um, matched the description that the lifeguards gave as well. Oh, shit. Uh, which was absolutely incredible. Now, yeah. all these features, like I said, they matched that that was seen, that was seen in 2003. Mm. Um, now, marine experts have been able to examine the photos of Barnum's mermaid, the three meter long mermaid, and they concluded that the either the creator was a top marine biologist of today's standard, yeah, or it's real. Now we're talking like nearly 150, 200 years ago. Yeah, marine biology was not anywhere near today's standard, so they wouldn't have had understood things like sagittal crests and and other stuff yeah. like that. I guess. No, but but mimicking it would have been the harder thing to actually somehow create a skull that would have. But this is a live specimen, crest. though. Well, this well is, and that as well. So yeah. this thing is is still got all its skin, its scales, yeah. and everything else. And the way that it kind of looks, it kind of looks like um, Abe Sapien from Hellboy. Ah, the good okay. Hellboy the good, the good movies, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not not the, the latest one, which is just yeah. shocking. But is it? Right. Yeah, I've still not seen it. Don't bother. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so th what, if you watch the Ron Perlman's one, um, you can see Abe Sapien. It's like a, a human, an aquatic humanoid. Right. So it's kind of like that sort of look. Okay. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, it's um, basically, it, I think that's absolutely incredible. I mean, the fact that it's experts have said... So long ago, yeah. It's got you've got to be a top marine biologist of today's standard to, to uh, fake create something, something like, that. like that, and that wouldn't have been the standard two hundred years prior. So, no. and that was back in well, the standard two years, two hundred years prior was sewing a monkey to a fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that was the and standard, using, and using wire as yeah. well. Yeah, it was like exactly or yeah, pieces so. of wood involved in it yeah. as well. It's just like that doesn't make any sense. So, for something yeah. like that to come out of it. Mm. It's very, very interesting yeah. indeed. We'll share images of this on the the socials once the episode yes. is dropped, along with the the videos. Because wasn't did you say there was actual footage captured from the R L N I? Yes, and the um, Barrier Reef. Uh, yes, there yeah, are. So we'll so share. We have to isolate those, and I'll put them into a clip for everyone. Yeah, we'll share. We'll share those on the uh, socials. Yes, yeah, definitely worth having a look. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. It really is. Now, this is um, gonna drop into what we've previously mentioned about the aquatic ape hypothesis or yes. theory. Yeah. Um, it's also known as the waterside hypothesis of human evolution. Yeah. Now, it's, it's it's quite an interesting one if you do want to look go into it oh, in yeah. a lot more detail than what I'm going to go into now. Um, but it suggests that the ancestors of modern humans took a divergent evolutionary pathway from other great apes by becoming adapted to a more aquatic habitat. Yeah. So... The hypothesis was initially um, proposed by marine biologist Alistair Hardy in the in 1960, who argued that a branch of apes was forced by competition over terrestrial habitats mm. to hunt for food such as shellfish on, on the seashore and, and on the seabed as well, mm. leading to various adaptations that explain distinctive characteristics of modern yeah. humans. Okay. Such as mm. functional hairlessness, mm -hmm. um, also the direction of their in which the the way the the hair grows um hydrodynamic physiology because we do swim fairly well mm. for a land mammal um the ability to swim for that matter controlled breathing now this is an interesting one because controlled breathing also helps with our linguistics so the yep. way in which we're actually able to communicate with language certainly helps with us being able to control our breathing mm. Um, which is something that a lot of land mammals are unable to do. Yeah. But marine mammals are. Can. Yeah. Um, so the, the small amount of webbing between our fingers and toes, um, depend on where you come from in the land, you may have more than the other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, subcutaneous layer of fat 
as well. So a yeah. layer of fat that's, that that sits underneath our skin. Now yeah. th- that's one thing that a lot of because um, I'm no expert, but what I have found is that there are some apes that mm. do have this, mm. but they are captive and food is abundant. Yeah. So if you know they're not exercising, not getting their regular daily exercise, and they're eating too much, much like us. Yeah. They get a bit chunky. Yeah. You know, so it's. But the other mammals that do have this extra layer of fat are marine mammals. Mm. Now, I think dolphin also, was one of the dolphin was whales, one of the closest. Seals, um, they said in terms of where we have the layer, like how thick it is and that kind of that's thing. That's right. Yeah. Um, but certainly in this documentary, they attributed it to uh, the dolphin. Mm. Because also, this is something as, as well. If you've got, like, you get some of these um, like mega fitness freaks that have like a very very low mm, fat percentage of the body fat or something yeah, yeah which is it's not and there are other experts out there that have gone well that's not healthy to maintain that you no. know you need that layer of fat for insulation mm. and everything else so it it makes maintains sense. the aesthetics isn't it not the sort of the functionality but yeah, yeah you'd get why it's not healthy to Exactly. People Everyone wants that, um, to see lean muscle and, and everything else like that. And yeah, don't we, Jay? Yeah, yeah well, I'm trying my best. Just so you can see your, your raging gorgon. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's got one. Everyone's got one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to have to find mine. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, there's that. It's back on topic. There's other yeah. things that, you know, match up. Well, so it's just, um, just to chime in quickly, actually, I know it was, it was for the most part a hoax, but when they mentioned the ape theory and they go into what their belief is, they, they actually said that it wasn't, it was less about competition between, you know, the, the sort of the ape species of that time. And it was actually more down to the habitat. And I think they said it was like 2 million years ago or something like that. There, there was a, a, a species of ape that lived in, in Africa somewhere. And mm. at the time it was very, um, uh, I can't think of the word, but there, there was a lot of volcanoes. Yeah. Um, within the like area. And it was a natural that disaster that basically all these volcanoes simultaneously erupted over a certain period, which basically drove the apes fro- inland and closer and closer to the shore to the point where they were having to eat fish. And so they had to learn fishing and, and basically live in more, mm. you know, sort of by the shore. When that then became um, uninhabitable, um, it's it's all believed that they they saw you know off the shore somewhere another um, mass of land, um, and so they basically they jumped in and off they they, went, they eh? swam they swam over. Um, Interesting. And it was that kind of the fact that they had to learn to swim and the type of food that they an were evolutionary catching sort and of that thing. kind of thing actually then became yeah an evolutionary. Well, this which, is the which thing. is where they think the breathing because because they say like, this is why humans can hold their breath. You know, for so long, why you know babies have that natural instinct to hold their breath and yeah, whatever. And so yeah, there's a, there was a lot of it was quite clever actually for a hoax. It, it used a lot of science that, to be fair, actually does what well, it stacks up sense. and it does make sense. Well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's um, there's a couple of I mean, bipedalism is one of those things that um, means that it makes sense to wade through water on two feet rather than on yeah. all fours. Yeah. Um, and also there's the regression of the olfactory organ. So your sense of smell. If you're a marine creature, you don't need a sense of smell. Yeah. And we know that our sense of smell is very, very poor. Yeah. Very poor in, in comparison, comparison to yeah. all, all the land mammals that are, there are out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, now this is the hypothesis, the theory itself is highly controversial and it's a little bit, um, almost typical of, anthropologists and mainstream anthropologists because they yeah. say they say it's a po- it's a theory that's very popular with the layman but is dismissed by real scientists as pseudoscience right okay so it's like them yeah. saying you lot are a bit too stupid to really understand what is going on here yeah so you believe in that yeah and we'll worry about what the actual truth is yeah i mean i, I wouldn't say it's very popular with the layman yeah. you know but it, it's a theory that is quite an attractive one yeah because that's part of the the reason why we do this as well is because we actually like some of these ideas. It might not be true, no, but we certainly like the idea and that the, it could the thinking yeah. that goes around it's an idea it. That it could be, and it's just learning about things that are, are different. You know, the fantastical, you know, the, the weird and wonderful, and, and actually just trying to shed some 
shed some light on things that people believe are myths but yeah. in actual fact there might not be yeah so absolutely yeah, yeah so it's yeah. I, I found that the the aquatic ape theory was quite an interesting one and i think it's worthwhile it really is, people yeah. having having a closer look into it yeah. um and don't be put off with people calling it a pseudoscience or you know for the thick not being widely believed or even if you've never heard of it before and think oh it's just a load of yeah go check it out it's, it's that, quite yeah. it's quite an interesting concept I mean, th- they they draw comparisons that you can't, you know, ignore. There is there is science there that you know does make sense, and so it gets to a point where you think, okay, I might not believe it, but you have to kind of respect where the theory has come from. It isn't mm. just you know a, a novel or a fairy tale or something that someone's come up just to try and be a bit different. Yeah, it's actually got, it's got some, it's got some substance to it. Yeah. You know, and like we said earlier in the. Um, in the episode, you know, there, there's a you know a, a Greek philosopher who believes that that's where we came from. That was what five five hundred BC, mm. I think we determined. So quite some time ago, and it's still to this day is, is believed, and the evidence is only getting stronger, and the science is only getting stronger. So, yeah. you know, I suppose like anything, you've just got to just give it the time of day. I suppose yeah, absolutely. Not to then you have to believe it. Well, yeah, but it's definitely well, that's, worth. That's exactly it. So, so. Oh, mermaid's real, Callum. Let's <laughs> get off the fence, man. Wow. Um, oh, mermaid's real. Um, yeah, do you know what? I, I I would have to say that, you know, from the, the research, you know, the, 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 you know, the sightings, but for me, more so the real world evidence and, and, and sightings and the mm. potential science behind it. I think it's stuff that, you know, that can't be, I don't think it can be ignored. Um, and so I think, yeah, I, I think if I had to pick now, which I know I do, <laughs> yeah. I would, um, yeah, I'd definitely be more on the side of believing, um, you know, than, than not believing, I would I would say. Mm. Um, a, lo- a lot of these sciencey bits, you know, I don't always pay much mind to, um, more so now, obviously, but usually I'd just be like, ah, that's utter nonsense we're talking about. Because you're, you you know, because you go to school and you're told that this is where we come from. This is our, you know, yeah. evolutionary history or whatever. And so that's always ingrained in you. And then when you read something else that might be a little bit well, we're kooky or quirky, you sort of think, hmm, no, well, this not is really the thing. Me, but What we're taught in school is slowly but surely, as I'm finding in my adult life, yeah. wrong. It's what they want you to know, not what you should know, yeah. isn't it? It's, and it's it's like, another um, control Unfortunately, it's system. one of these things like the, the out-of-Africa theory. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is being proven incorrect Yeah. More, well, for, for a long time now. At university-level yeah, exactly, anthropology, yeah. they're, not, they're not teaching that yeah. because well, they those, know that it's wrong. And those scientists are being hushed. And it, it may say, sound because, controversial to say that, mm. but we know that it that's not the case. It's more likely that human evolution Again, yeah. came out of the middle east rather than yeah. africa itself yeah but but no, it's um seems like there's an agenda there yeah definitely and uh, i think you know taking that into account and like i say the other evidence and you know everything else um it's it's hard to uh it's hard to ignore so yeah i'd, I'd have to say that you know w- when you've got real people in history putting their name to such claims and to such theories and you know, providing that, you know, this evidence, you know, you have to give it some sort of credence and, mm. you know, you, you do have to sort of listen. And so I think in some way, um, you know, much like, you know, elves and the goblins and other things that we've covered, I think to an extent, yes, there is a, a real element to them. I think they do exist in some form. While we don't see them anymore, probably blame it on, I guess, the, the simple ones would be, I guess, you know, the fishing activities in the, in the waters now and everything being butchered and used for skin and meat and medicine and whatever else it's all commodities isn't it they're probably yeah, yeah. they're probably thinking outside sod that and not you know not coming to the uh coming to the surface but um yeah I, I think there is something to it um whether we'll ever find out i don't know but mm. yeah I'd, I'd, I'd have to lean on the side of belief i, I think more so than anything at i this would point. say that i the the, the possibility mm. is certainly there yeah, me. definitely. The possibility that that there is something else out there is 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 quite high for for me, really. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. It's, it comes down to the idea that, and I've said it before, we don't actually know uh, evolution, uh, how it applies to us. We know that no. it applies to other creatures. We've been able to find it 
um, it, in the fossil records, but we haven't been able to find the complete story of us. No. And could there have been a... Unless we're not being told the full story, of course. Yeah, there is always whatever that. whatever reason, yeah. And the idea of evolution is that, you know, the, the, the T-shirt or the poster that you've got of evolution where you start off with a, with a monkey and it turns to a chimp and a gorilla and then a caveman and then a up, more upright caveman and yeah. then us. That's not how evolution worked. That's not how it happened. We yeah. didn't evolve from chimps. We didn't evolve no. from gorillas or anything like that. We share a common ancestor that split off for gorillas about 10 million years ago. Yeah. For chimps, it was about eight and a, eight and a half million years ago. So yeah. that's why they're often considered our closest relative in the primate world. Yeah. So potentially, we could have shared an ancestor that split off in the, before 10 million years ago Yeah. that decided to go toward the sea. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, if there's exactly a potential right. that so that could have happened. And there is the there is the potential. If the if you believe the theory, then the evidence and whatever does stack up as to being a possibility. And at this point, even what we've been told is our evolution is just a possibility because no one actually exactly. knows, as you rightly say. So I think at this point you've just got to take any theory on board unless it is you know completely it's daft it's certainly something it's... i'm not just going to close the door on and no. you know i i don't think i'm necessarily gonna um just straight up go yes mermaids are real they're this they're that you know yeah. th there's there's a lot the of possibility like say, is real exactly yeah. the possibility is real yeah and that the, we do have a fair bit of real world evidence and we do like even recently mm. as well yeah. uh, there's, there's a guy on tiktok that's posted a couple of videos and such. Yeah, exactly. And again, a fisherman. A fisherman. Um, based and, out um, of the States. Yeah, I believe he's uh, out of uh, Massachusetts. So this is actually right. out in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, yeah. It's very much along the same lines as the documentary where they could hear the, the, the dolphin calls and, and yeah. such. So, But this was above, this was above the it, surface as yes. opposed to, you know, below. And He's picking it up with his actual phone. microphone on his, on his yeah. phone. And you can hear the dolphin calls. You can. It's a cool story to, um, it's a cool story to actually. So, oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, just like with the, just a trawler boat mm. out in you know out in the Atlantic, as you say, and um, that he picks up these cries and the you know much like we I described from that documentary, mm. um, you know the, the the sort of the pained you know sort of cry you know sort of from a distance. Almost like it, calling for help, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. He's in the middle of the Atlantic on a big trawler boat. You know, if it's a fake, it's a very good one. I'll, yeah. So I'll, I'll give him kudos for that. If it is a fake, it's a very good one, um, and. Uh, yeah, you sort of you, you hear all that, and he, he sort of shouts at it, and he sort of tries to interact with it, and you, you can see where he is. So there's no way that there's going to be someone, no. you know, out there making that well, noise. There's, or... there's another video that he's got, and it's taken during daylight hours because the right. first, the first, most of the videos it seems are, are at, at night. night. Yeah. Um. So it makes you go, oh, all right, it's easier to fake because I don't know. It's you might have a speaker and... behind him or something yeah, exactly, like that or yeah. whatever. But there's one where it's in daylight hours, and he. The camera goes over the edge of the boat yeah. and there's something swimming yeah. under the waves you and it, it looks yeah. like long dark hair with two arms and a fishtail yeah. and it instantly cuts to his face with like a fuck sort of face. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah. then there's the other one where it follows him back to dock and there's another yeah. guy on the boat and he's going, he got, he's, he's like, can you hear that? Can, can you, you hear, hear that? that? He's like, yeah, what the fuck is that, man? Yeah. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. And I think it's quite interesting that that, cropped up whilst we've been researching exactly yeah, i hadn't seen or heard of, of anything about that and then yeah as you say we're doing the research for this episode and it starts blowing up on yeah you know my my socials that i, that I saw synchronous maybe just, yeah exactly another synchronicity so uh yeah we'll try and find a link to um you know to that stuff because that was quite recently we're talking like months ago yeah. that that was that was all captured um so yeah we'll share that as well because that will definitely uh be of interest i think if you know if you've followed us this far on the um on the, on the topic but uh mm. so yeah i think that's probably where we land the possibility is real there's enough evidence to suggest that there is an evolutionary path there to to have these things actually yeah. exist or that we came from you know from these things which it would explain some of the earlier um you know sort of sightings so, mainstream uh, science was to shut down anything alternative don't, yeah exactly you know, yeah it's very much a song to sing today yeah exactly yeah absolutely yeah it still lends itself today as you, as you rightly say so um so yeah, so I think uh, if that's um, if that's that, I think that brings us to the end of uh, another episode. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. I know we we certainly have. Um, 
even the second time round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, th- uh, thank you again to uh, our Patreon, Justin. Uh, appreciate the continued support. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this one, man. Um, it's been uh, it's been a good one. We've we've certainly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and again, it's taken us down a path that I don't think either of us necessarily expected. So, well, I'm uh, not going to say shave the monkey. And no, say don't it. say that in the podcast again. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so thanks again, man, for for, for the uh, for the support. Um, also, just to reiterate, uh, another sort of shout out and thank you to uh, both Ben and Baz of Hellfire Creative for hosting us. Um, and much. remember, guys, for any content creation, um, whether it be podcast, film, or, or photography. This is the place to come. Um, you know, we're only forty-five minutes yeah. f- um, from from London, so really not that far. Um, and again, you can go to hellfirestudio.uk and uh, use our code Cryptid at the checkout for twenty percent off, just for being a, a listener. So mm. uh, take advantage of it. Do indeed. Um, whilst whilst we've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If we have any more difficulties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to nip that in the bud. Okay, quick. Plonkers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, just to just to sort of track back a little bit. You know, if you are enjoying, you know, what we're doing, um, then remember we do have a, a Patreon, conveniently under Cryptid Ramblers Podcast. So you can we we'll, we'll share the link uh, to oh, it, but we are easily. Uh, findable on there so why not come and uh, support your favorite uh, podcast indeed um and of course if that isn't enough um as scott rightly mentioned we also have our merch store um at creatorspring.com um where you can pick up the teas that we are beautifully modeling right now right as now. Uh, as our patreon can can see lucky sod um now we've not actually we've not actually done this for a while um but we're actually going to announce what the uh, the next topic's going to be. We are indeed, yeah. <laughs> Just to uh, yeah, cut any uh, surprise. I, don't, I can't. I can't really think why we've not done it before. But no, I think um, I think we just sort of lost. We just fell out of the habit of well, I've mentioned it. I know Hellier, a couple of times. Hellier did it for well, us, yeah, really. Hellier we had took like three up. episodes. I we had like yeah. Lord of the Rings yeah, length sort of trilogy trilogy yeah. going on there. That yeah. we if, well next week Hellier. Yeah, next week. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, it might be that. But, um, but yeah, as, as we like to do, you know, keeping in theme with this episode, um, we'll, we're going to be jumping into and exploring sirens and nymphs. Um, yes. I know we mentioned sirens briefly um, earlier and that there is an origin, um, you know, kind of link between mermaids and sirens. Um, but there's enough of a difference also to... You know, sort of have their own episode, certainly yeah. as we thought. Anyway, so yeah, so that's going to be, um, yeah, that's going to be the next, uh, the next, next episode. Uh, episode. So yeah, looking forward to that one as well. Um, so on that note, it's uh, goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from me. And uh, remember, be careful when you're going out for a swim. You don't want to meet a raging gorgon. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> I like that one. That's good. <laughs> Raging.